Uh, good evening, everyone. This is a, a special meeting of ANC 34G. Um, I'm Randy Speck. I'm the chair of uh, the commission. I represent the single member district that is ANC 34G03. And that's basically the area between Nebraska and Utah and Broad Branch. Uh, we'll introduce the other commissioners as we typically do at our meetings. Uh, Peter, do you want to go next? <clears throat> uh, good evening. I'm Peter Gosselin. I represent District 6, which is the neighborhood uh, from uh, along the Western Avenue border with Maryland between 41st and the Chevy Chase Circle, down uh, Connecticut all on the west side to military, back to 41st with the peninsula to the east. I welcome you. John? I'm John Higgins. I am the single member district for SMD 02. <clears throat> Excuse me. My district extends east to west from Oregon to Utah and from north to south from military to actually to the Everfoyle Creek. Connie. Good evening. Uh, my name is Connie Chang. I am the commissioner for single member district number five. And on the west side of my district is east side of Connecticut, starting uh, from legation and uh, the north side is western uh, the east side is broad branch uh, road and then it hooks in on legation but it goes down from nevada and broad branch i'm sorry yeah broad branch road right to jocelyn michael sorry i was on mute i'm uh, michael zeldin i'm 3g04 which goes from lafayette at northampton there over to um, Western Avenue at um, Upland and bounded by Broad Branch and Utah. And Lisa. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lisa Gore, and I'm the commissioner for ANC 34G01, which represents all of Hawthorne and portions of Barnaby Woods. My SMD runs from um, Oregon Avenue to Western Avenue, past Pinehurst Circle, um, down a uh, little bit down Utah to 31st, back up to the tributary, and back down Beach and back up to Oregon Avenue. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have all six commissioners here tonight, so we have a quorum and can conduct business. Uh, the only item on our agenda for this special meeting is the redistricting proposals that have been made at the uh, council, uh, submitted by the subcommittee on redistricting. Uh, and so that's the only issue that we can take up by our bylaws. We can't add any additional uh, items to that agenda without consent of all of the commissioners. Uh, so we'll begin with that. And Lisa, you are going to chair this portion of the meeting. So I turn it over to you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Randy. Um, good evening, everyone. So Randy pretty much gave you an introduction on what we're going to be discussing tonight. Um, we had an ANC meeting at our last actual ANC meeting where we heard from our council member in Ward 3, Mary Che, as well as several members of the community on the proposed um, redistricting map that the council had already adopted. And in particularly, the potential boundary changes, if at all, for Wards 3 and 4, which basically means um, portions of Chevy Chase, all of Barnaby Woods, and all of Hawthorne. And whether or not um, community members wanted to go back to Ward 4 or Ward 3 or stay within Ward 4. So based on that ANC meeting, we had enough feedback and also outside of that meeting that um, we called for a special meeting so that the community could come before the ANC and give us our opinion, give us their opinion on those particular boundary changes. So that's why we're here tonight. It was relatively short notice, and part of that was because of the council's schedule. The council is scheduled to take its first vote on the redistricting subcommittee's draft map or their map that they are presented to the Committee of the Whole on December 7th. So that doesn't leave the ANC a lot of time to listen to the community, um, propose something, you know, whether it's a resolution or not, transmitted if that's what we're going to do 
So we had to kind of have this meeting really quickly to get some of that going and give us a little bit time if we did um, want to enter a resolution. So that brings us to where we are tonight. Um, I pretty much led the, along with Michael Zeldin, organizing the panels for tonight. There are three panels. Most of the panels have four speakers on them. Some of them do not. In addition to the panels, we also have members of the community that have submitted written statements. Those written statements I've printed off and will read into the record. So they'll become part of the permanent record. And I will also give those over to the commissioners, which will go up on our website so that they're you know, completely in the record. After that, we will have um, or give members of the community an opportunity to speak if you did not sign up on the panel or if you did not submit a written statement. So I think there are some email instructions in the, um, the invitation. Um, everyone has three minutes. We're gonna try to stick to that. Um, try to curb your impulse to ask commissioners questions and I will ask the commissioners to hold your questions of the panelists until after everyone on the panel has gone. And then I'll give you an opportunity to ask the panelists questions. And the uh, biggest rule of tonight is to be polite, to be kind, be nice. We know that this is a very important discussion to our Ward 3, Ward 4 communities. That's why we're here. We wanna hear from you. Um, but just make sure that we keep our conversation civil. And I know we'll do that. So with that said, I want to ask that members in panel one, I'm going to read out your name. Mona Banach, Lee Mayer, Ed Meyer, and Kathleen, Ed and Kathleen, husband and wife. If you guys can raise your hand you know how to do that at the bottom of your screen, you'll see the raise hand function. Please raise your hand and Randy will promote you and we'll get started. You see him, Randy? Yep. And um, panel number one, first speaker is Mona. Second is Lee, third, Ed, and then Kathleen. And Mona, whenever you're ready. Thanks very much, Lisa. Hi, my name is Mona Benach, and I've been a resident of Barnaby Woods for over 15 years now, which has been in Ward 4 for all of that time. During that time, I have never heard amongst my neighbors or the people around me that we were any worse off or disadvantaged by being in Ward 4 versus Ward 3. I've taken a look at the maps. I've taken a look at which wards are larger, which wards are smaller. And it seems that this is a solution without a problem, to be perfectly honest. The council at large members who are neutral during in this matter have proposed that Ward 3 and Ward 4 boundaries not be touched. Um, and personally, as a longtime resident of Ward 4, I would agree with that. There doesn't seem to be a reason to move us over to Ward 3. I personally have experienced excellent constituent service from our Ward 4 council member. Um, Ward four and ward three children will all go to the same schools no matter what. And I truly cannot figure out why this has come up now, given the fact that the populations have not shifted and that there doesn't seem to be a pressing reason other than the line is now not through the park anymore like it was 20 years ago. There is no reason that Janice Lewis George or whoever Ward 4's council member is can't adequately represent Ward 4 just as well as any other council member. And we are part of Ward 4. I've heard that geographically it's hard to get across the park, that somehow we're not linked to those neighborhoods. 
And that makes no sense to me. I go to the other neighborhoods of Ward 4 and Silver Spring nearly as often as I go to Bethesda and Tenley Town. The traffic is makes the commute the same. There, the fact that this has been proposed without any justification, be it voting in terms of spreading out the ward population balances or any other pressing matter, to be honest with you as a ward four resident makes no sense to me. And I very much hope that this idea dies quickly and does not go any further. The council has worked long and hard on the proposed ward boundaries as they are the maps one, two, and three that I'm sure we've all looked at. And we all can say that there's been no substantial difference in population growth between ward four and ward three that would justify this. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Lee Mayor. And if I can ask the um, panelists just to stay on until um, the end of your panel to make sure if any commissioners have questions for you, um, they have you readily available. Thank you, Lee. Hi, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Welcome. I'm a 36 year resident of Hawthorne and I was the uh, ANC commissioner for 3G01 back in the late 80s when we were in Ward 3. Uh, before I get into justification, I'd just like to uh, discuss or mention that the subcommittee redistricting report on page five states, uh, first the population of, quote, first the population of each ward must not deviate more than plus or minus 5% from the average ward population unless the deviation results from the limitations of census geography or from the promotion of rational public policy, including but not limited to respect for the political geography of the district, the natural geography of the district, neighborhood co cohesiveness, or the development of compact and contiguous districts. The subcommittee interprets this statute as a declaration of additional redistricting pr principles that should be considered uh, when they do the plan. So um, I believe that the residents of Chevy Chase, Barnaby Woods and Hawthorne should be back in, could be back in Ward 3 by shifting the borders of Ward 4 and 5 to get equal population representation, even though the prior paragraph I read doesn't require it. Unfortunately, I was unable to figure out how to manipulate the map uh, to make a proposal to the subcommittee. However, I did submit written testimony uh, to them requesting that we rejoin Ward 3. Um, when I describe where I live, I say I live in Chevy Chase, DC. Our ANC representatives are in Chevy Chase. I shop in the grocery stores in Chevy Chase. I frequent the bars and restaurants on Connecticut Avenue. 95% of my shopping takes place on the west side of the park. I go to the Chevy Chase Library and the community center. I used to commute to and from downtown uh, via Connecticut Avenue. And I suspect that most of the residents of Chevy Chase, Barnaby Woods and Hawthorne shop and commute like me. It's very obvious that we should be in Ward, back in Ward 3 so we can have a voice on what goes on in our neighborhood, just like we used to. Some may argue that staying in Ward 4, we have two representatives. That's not really the case. If the Ward 3 council member takes a particular stance on the SAP, the Chevy Chase Library or Community Center, for example, I can't vote for or against them. In essence, I have no council member representation in my, in my neighborhood. And again, by neighborhood, I'm really referring to the Connecticut Avenue corridor. I live on Western Avenue, which runs through Ward 3. Traffic related issues in Ward 3 and Connecticut Avenue commercial corridor affect me more than what happens in Ward 4 and what happens on Georgia Avenue. The construction on Oregon Avenue and Ward 4 has resulted in heavy traffic on Western Avenue, especially during rush hour. It would be beneficial if these two jurisdictions were overseen by a single council member. Um, I'm a little disappointed that more wasn't done to poll residents prior to tonight and the other meeting just the other day. I know several Ward 4 residents who still think they're in Ward 3. So there's still a big mis, uh, misconception by residents here thinking they're in Ward four, 3 and they're really not. 
The uh, small area plan is being discussed for the commercial area on Upper Connecticut Avenue. And this could have a huge impact on traffic and property values in Hawthorne, Barnaby Woods, and portions of Chevy Chase. Again, I do not have representation at the council member, council member level to voice my opinion on this matter. That makes no sense. It is for these reasons that I find it important to respect the natural geographic borders and reunite Hawthorne, Barnaby Woods, and Chevy Chase back into Ward 3. The paragraph I read from page five of the subcommittee report allows this. I'd like to see the ANC write a resolution on reuniting Ward 3 before the first subcommittee hearing vote on December 7th. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Ed? And if you're you're muted, we can hear you. I think you take. I think no. Yeah, there you go. Ed. Is that better? Yes. <laughs> okay. Am I on now? Yes. Okay. Great. Thanks. I'm Ed Myers, and good evening to you. I'm a resident of Hawthorne in Ward Four, and uh, I very much prefer that we stay in as residents of Ward Four, where we've been for thirty years. Uh, it's a long time because 15 of those years, uh, my wife and I, Kathleen, were in uh, Colonial Village. Uh, and the last 15 years, we've been in uh, Hawthorne of DC. And um, I see a lot more similarity between Hawthorne and Colonial Village and other neighborhoods in Ward 4, North Portal Estates, Crestwood, than I do with Ward 3. Uh, neighborhoods such as Chevy Chase, AU Park, let's say, Palisades. Our orientation is not necessarily towards uh, Connecticut Avenue. In fact, we, we go more to the east. We socialize uh, in Ward 4 at least as much as in Ward, uh, as in uh, other areas uh, to the west. And so that's our orientation. It's our political identity. It's our um, cultural identity, you might say. And uh, we, we have great council member representation in Janice Lewis George. Uh, uh, we've liked all of our council members. We go way back to uh, Charlene Drew Jarvis, but you know, all of them, Muriel Bowser, Adrian Fenty and so forth. But um, our, our politicians are, are different in their orientation to the issues. And um, we just feel more comfortable with them. I think Janice Lewis George makes a great team with Commissioner Gore, by the way. And so I think we've got it made really as far as our political representation. We don't feel left out of anything. I mean, we feel like we're su superbly represented. Um, I just like to add that we also see, or I see no urgency whatsoever in trying to uh, leave Ward 4 and go into Ward 3. Uh, if you look at the population, Ward 3 actually has more population than Ward 4. Uh, so, you know, you'd be taking a Ward 4 population and getting it to Ward Three, unless you figure out a way to take something from Ward Five or whatever you have to do there, and so the five percent rule of, of, of redistricting really places us both Ward Four and Ward Three right in the center, and so that pretty much takes care of my time. We're just strong advocates of staying where we are, where we've been for thirty years in good old Ward Four. Thank you, Ed. Kathleen? Yes, well, uh, thanks, Lisa, and thank you, thanks for everyone for allowing us to talk. You know, this is the third one of these that I have participated in. <laughs> Everybody is holding Zoom meetings on this issue. And this is the one that is closest to home uh, because it is sponsored by the AMC and you are uh, de facto closest to home for us. Uh, I would just like to say that uh, I believe that a lot of this is being driven by a small faction 
It does not represent the desires, particularly of the people of Hawthorne, where I live, and that's really all I can speak for. Um, I think there are some folks, especially folks in Barnaby Woods, who feel closer to Ward 3 because geographically they are closer to Ward 3. But where we live, right next door to the park on the western side, we're not that close to Ward 3. When I shop, I tend not to go to Wisconsin Avenue. I never go to Palisades. My issues are not in that part of DC. Uh, my interests are in the part of DC where I live, which is close to Rock Creek Park, just close to Georgia Avenue, close to the giant in Silver Spring, even though I know you have no jurisdiction there. This is, this is where our life is. And this is true for many of the people who live along 31st Street, where we live, 32nd Street, that area. So we are not necessarily close enough to be interested in what's happening over on Connecticut Avenue. Uh, and I would hope that the ANC understands that, sure, there are some people, I suspect many of them are in Barnaby Woods who want this to happen, but there are many people who don't live in that part of the city who don't want this to happen. And if you wanna get scientific about it, let's stop with the Zoom meetings and do a legitimate survey and get some real data as opposed to anecdotal opinions, because I think that's what you get with Zoom meetings. You get anecdotal opinions, mine included, by the way. <laughs> uh, you know, at this point, I'll turn it over. I, I have a lot more to say on the topic. I do think there are attitudinal differences uh, among people who live in this part of the conglomeration of Ward 4 and Ward 3 uh, versus the other part. I see it play out in issues all the time. I can give you examples. One that I remember vividly uh, was when Walmart came over to Georgia Avenue. People from Ward 3 fought against it. Uh, people from Ward 4 tended to want it to happen because it represented jobs for in and around the ward. So I think you get those kinds of differences uh, between Wards 3 and Ward 4, and nobody really talks about them a lot, but if you watch how issues play out, you can, you can see that there are differences in the way people think and perceive things between Wards 3 and Ward 4. Um, I'll close by saying, like Ed, I'm happy with our representation, both at the ANC level, thank you, Lisa, for being our ANC representative, uh, and also with Janice Lewis-George. She's new, but I think she's very promising. I've participated in some of the, the Zooms that she has. I feel my issues are represented by Janice, and I would like to keep it that way. Thank you all for hearing me. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, commissioners, do you all have any questions for this panel? Nope. No questions. All right. Thank you all. Okay. Second panel is up. Andrea Rosen, Loretta Karan. Please uh, forgive me if I mispronounce your last name. And Ferial Bishop. If you guys could raise your hands and we'll switch out the panels. Andrea, when you're ready. Okay. We residents of Barnaby Woods, Hawthorne, and bits of Chevy Chase are separated from the great mass of Ward 4 by a geological barrier. That translates to political isolation, and political isolation has consequences. I've testified before, so I won't elaborate here, about how regardless of our political assignment to Ward 4, administratively, the city government recognizes us as Ward 3. And I've noted that many of us, if not most of us, go on a regular basis for goods and services to Connecticut Avenue, a commercial corridor that is likely to undergo greater change over the next decade than perhaps at any time since it was developed a century ago. Many of us care deeply about how it is redeveloped, but the avenue is in Ward 3, so we Ward 4 West residents have no levers to express our needs and desires and no one to toss out of office if we're unhappy with the process or result. 
The lived experience of residents of Ward 4 West is very like that of Ward 3 residents living on the other side of Broad Branch Road, but we are thwarted in ways small and large. We mostly can't park for more than two hours near any close by metro stations. That would be Friendship Heights and Tenley Town. Though we send our children to public school, we can't vote for the Board of Education representatives for their middle and high schools. As my former ANC commissioner pointed out to me, we can't run for council to represent the part of the city we know best. At the same time, a candidate running for Ward 4 council from say Barnaby Woods would be like the tail trying to wag the dog. Liking the Ward 4 council member, which I do, forging bonds with people who live across Rock Creek Park, which I have done, fighting for racial equity, which I also try to do as well, are laudable activities, but they're not word dependent. What is relevant is the inability of some 8,300 of us to steer changes that will affect our lives in our own neighborhood. It echoes the inability of DC residents to mediate outcomes at the congressional level in our own nation. And the learned helplessness we've adopted as stateless Americans repeats itself here on our island between two wards. The chair of the council redistricting subcommittee, council member Silverman, stated during ward specific redistricting hearings that no ward is off the table. What a missed opportunity. The ANC should have conducted a public education campaign in September when census data were released, when there was time to build will and negotiate boundary shifts among wards that would mutually serve neighborhoods, including ours. But by characterizing the redistricting of our neighborhood back toward three as an impossibility to this ANC's commissioners, all of whom have served less than a year, Chairman Speck helped to lull us in, into complacency and all but ensure the impossibility of regaining authentical political representation in the place where we live. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, and Mary Rouse is also on as the fourth person in this panel. Loretta? Yes, hi. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Loretta Kiron. That's how it's pronounced, Kiron. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, in addition to all the comments mentioned tonight, I want to point out the following. At a redistricting meeting that I attended on November the 5th, I heard it stated, and I think it was by Alyssa Silverman's chief of staff, that natural boundaries should be considered when redistricting maps are drawn. My comment is that Rock Creek Park is a huge natural boundary, which separates Ward 4 west of the park from the rest of Ward 4. This area used to be in Ward 3, and should be returned, in my opinion, back to Ward 3. If the redistricting committee does not do this, it's not following its own rules. And one last thing, the people in the Foxhall area of Ward 3 want to move to Ward 2. If this happens, the numbers of people in Ward 3 would decrease, thus allowing for the return of some Ward 4 West of the Park residents. In addition, Ward 4 East of the Park could expand itself in other directions, thus allowing the rest of Ward 4 West of the Park to rejoin Ward 3. I happen to live just a couple of blocks from Broad Branch Road and spend most of my time up on Connecticut Avenue. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Uh, thank you again for the opportunity to speak tonight. Thank you, Loretta, for yeah. inviting. Thank you. Burial? Is he on? Randy, do you see him as a participant? Last name Bishop. Did. Yep. Randy, can you promote um, Burial Bishop? 
I am trying. <laughs> As you raise your hand. Yeah. Burial, if you're ready, you can go now. Uh, now I'm seeing what I normally see on all kinds of Zoom meetings. Uh, good evening, all. My name is Ferial Bishop. I'm a resident of Ward 4 on Chestnut Street in the Hawthorne area. And I have been in this uh, city and this side for decades. Uh, <clears throat> originally, we were in Ward 3. And then, of course, the big shift came uh, 10 plus years ago. But I want to, everyone to know that I am very satisfied and happy with where I am. Uh, some people are complaining that they only shop on Connecticut Avenue. I shop all over the city. Uh, I run over, as someone said, to uh, the Giant. I shop on Connecticut Avenue. I shop on Georgia Avenue. I shop on Wisconsin Avenue. It doesn't matter. It seems to me that if you're interested in what's going on in the city, you need to expand your horizons to find out what really is going on in the city. I also would like to point out that whatever issues affect one side of Rock Creek Park or the other affects all of us. And it would be uh, behooving upon all of us to take advantage to know what's going on on this side of the park versus the other side of the park. I also want you to know that I've been very happy with all of our AM, all of our Ward 4 council members that we have had, the sum in the past, as well as the one that we have today. As far as I'm concerned and my residents and my uh, neighbors, we have been afforded an opportunity from all of our Ward 4 council members to take a look at us, to come visit with us to hold uh, meetings in homes over here, to have events at Rafi uh, Lafayette School, if you remember, in collecting Christmas coats, and, and as well as far as over all the way down to uh, Riggs Park, because we had lots of things going on for senior citizens. I am very happy and satisfied where we are and I also want to give a shout out to the ANC 3-4. My husband used to be the ANC for this particular Hawthorne area some years ago. And I, as a, a, a member of this board, for, it has been very pleased with the way the ANC 3-4-G slash uh, has been operating. I, I'm concerned that they have brought issues that affect not only people who are in three, but also those of us who live in four. So it's a conglomeration of what's going on in the city. And as far as I am concerned, there should be no changes with the boundaries that we have today. We have bigger issues in this city than to be worrying about who, what, what part of who's gonna be in what section. As far as I'm concerned, we need to be concerned about everything that's going on, whether I'm west of the park or east of the park. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm very delighted that I'm part of 34G, that my husband, Joe Bishop, was a part of it when he lived. And as far as I'm concerned, Lisa, et cetera, I am happy where I am on Chestnut Street. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mary Rouse. Mary, you're muted. Mary, Mary, you're muted. Mary declined to be a panelist. I, I don't know whether she's um, she just doesn't want to speak or not. I don't. I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> 
Um, Commissioner, do you have any questions for this panel? I just have one brief comment. Uh, Ferial, thank you so much for Joe's uh, support during his term at the ANC. I remember when Joe was a, a commissioner and he did a very, very fine job. And I know you supported him in all of that. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much for your comment, Randy. Randy, give me one minute. There's a message that came in. Mm -hmm. She said she was calling in. She's on. I do have. I do have one question for Andrea. Andrea, um, after Connie, okay. just give me one minute. Let me try to get Mary straight. Randy, she is actually, she says she's on the phone. Well, I, so I, just found, hit. Her. I found her and I uh, had tried to promote her to a panelist and it was not. What, what's her number? I, it, no, I, I found, find her name on here. Her name is there. Um, and she, I'd given her permission to talk. So if she unmuted herself, I think she can talk, but I- How do you I, unmute on the phone? I mean, she's listed as, as talking permitted, so she yeah, can- Yeah, it should. Yep. Okay, hang on, Mary. We're gonna get to you. Connie, ask your question. And I was gonna- to okay, out. I was just, uh, yeah, it just because we're trying to figure this out. I was just going to ask Andrea, um, in your statement, you said you live a few blocks from Broad Branch Road. So you're in Ward 4, just to be clear. Correct. I am, yes. Sorry. Yes. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mary, try to do star six. Okay. There she is. A little bit of. Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. No, you can't. We can okay, hear you. But it's. Oh, but... gosh. We can hear you. I don't think. Hold on. OK, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry Better. about all that. Really sorry about all that. I tried to come in on the camera, then I went to the phone, then I went. <laughs> anyway, um, can you so you can hear me? Yeah. OK. Um, Thank you for holding this hearing, this uh, meeting. I really appreciate it. Um, as you uh, know, I believe that it would be in our community's best interest to reunite uh, Chevy Chase, Barnaby Woods, and Hawthorne into our community. Uh, council members come and go, and ANC commissioners come and go. I know because I was one of them in the late 80s for two terms, and I believe I served with Lee Mayer and possibly with Joe, uh, I don't know. Um, probably, well, I remember being friends with Joe and I really miss him. Thank you, Ferriol, for your- I miss him too. I know. Um, he really cared about this community. And um, I think, I, I recall that, I thought 20 years ago when we moved that he was opposed to it, that, that you might have been opposed to it. But at any rate, a lot of us were opposed to it because nothing needed to happen to Ward 4 uh, eight, 20 years ago. That, that Ward 4 was at the right size. And uh, we all know that Adrian Fenty nevertheless took advantage of what Kathy Patterson offered and the rest is history. So I just am a big believer in, in focusing on our community and not so much on the politicians and the people, uh, but rather uh, that, that you know our council members will come and go, but this neighborhood is forever. I mean, this community, this Chevy Chase community is forever. And uh, Kingman Park, interestingly enough, was split up 20 years ago as well, and they are getting reunited this time. So we're losing out, and uh, it's a shame because we we had the numbers. The numbers were there. Foxhall wanted to go to two. They took a vote in their community association. Two thirds of the people wanted to go, and the numbers would have worked. Just so everybody knows, the numbers would have worked. And I hope that in uh, 10 years, somebody else will take up this battle and try to reunite our community because it really is not about who's in office, but about what this community stands for and what we all care about and what we work together with. Anyone who's ever tried to work on a political issue knows that you need the uni unification of an area to do it best. And uh, I think it's a testament to the fact that for 20 years, we've kind of splintered and we've uh, lost our power as a community. 
And I'm afraid that's what I, I see. And I agree with Lee Mayer, Loretta Kiron, Andrea Rosen. Everyone made wonderful points. Um, but I think um, that we do, this is one of the biggest issues. I disagree that this is a small issue. This is a big issue. This is about community and working together as a community and supporting each other as a community. And I just hope everybody can remember that. Um, I think it's also very important that we have independent redistricting done by a commission in the future, that we don't have council members who are looking at their own self-interests, that we don't have ANC commissioners participating in redistricting, that everything is done by an independent body so that we can really take away the politics, if at all possible, with all of this. Um, so I guess um, I just wanted to also say that I, I've been a long time volunteer in this community with all kinds of organizations. And I really feel that I see the larger picture of Chevy Chase as a community. And I am very disappointed that this ANC uh, didn't get on this issue sooner. And I appreciate that you're on it now, but I think that it's probably too little too late. Uh, nevertheless, I hope the ANC will pass a resolution seeking the reunification of our entire geographic area um, it doesn't have to affect where people shop or anything like that. It's really not about any of that. It's about keeping our community together. And um, we are geographically treated all as one Ward 3 area by city services, trash and Mayor, leaf collection Mayor, and everything. Okay. You, your time's up. All right. So thanks for listening. And I hope you'll pass a resolution supporting the reunification. Okay, Randy, if you could um, return this panel list to participants and okay. promote Harry Barnes and Joe King. And, and Lisa? Randy. Yeah, Connie. Lisa, is Elizabeth Patton supposed to speak? Is she? Um, isn't isn't she on this panel panel two? I'm confused. She's been on, she's yeah, been she's on the been screen. On a long time. I don't have her actually as a panelist. Okay, so she's been. Okay, so she needs to not be promoted, and it was a little confusing okay. to me. It, it um, might help if uh, Randy just uh, de-escalated de Mona and Kathleen, and so that and yeah. uh, Mary well, and. Do we, and Randy, you can make me a co-host. You know, I usually do. You, you, you are a co-host. Oh, okay. I can't yeah. promote anyone, though. You can't. You, know, you should be able to. Okay, should I take Elizabeth Patton off of the, yeah. the panelists then? Okay. Yeah, and Mary and Kathleen. Okay. Okay. Now, who who would you like me to to? Um... Harry Barnes and okay. Joe King. Jay King has a hand up. Yep. Should I go ahead, uh, Randy or Lisa? Uh, yes, you can. Okay. I, uh, I've been up here 50 years. Uh, my two sons went to Lafayette. I actually served a couple of years as chairman of the Lafayette at the school program, following Lou Thompson, if you remember Lou. It's ironic when my kids walked across the street after they became Ward 4, they were in a different ward to go to Broad Branch Market. I mean, that makes no sense. Well, I endorse what Lee Meyer said 
where Mary Rao supported that, that approach of natural barriers. He talked about the district. MPD recognizes basically the park as a barrier, a natural barrier. Uh, leaf collection, trash collection. I hope some of the members of the commission will go down Western Avenue from Chevy Chase Circle towards the park. It is full of patches, about to be potholes with the winter coming until I believe Broad Branch. That's Mary Chase district. We have no voice with Mary Shea. Our, our council, councilwoman in Ward 4 probably never goes that route. I hope some of you will go down there. I hope we get the road done. These are city services. It's a natural barrier. It makes sense. Uh, I believe when people talk about justice, we get put in this position not 30 years ago, someone said, but 20 years ago. Someone from Hawthorne said 30 years. It was 20 years. It was unjust then. It was a matter of, a, of someone being a bully. I think this council and the ANC should endorse getting us back. Two of the people wanting to speak, to stay in, in, in Ward 4 from Hawthorne talk about shopping in Silver Spring. They've used that term tonight on this broadcast, Silver Spring. That's in Maryland. The fact is, is that the people all around me shop on Connecticut Avenue or further west, not so much on Western Avenue, but simply the Connecticut Avenue corridor, which is about to be subject to a redevelopment plan. We want to have a voice in that. Uh, it makes no sense to have this artificial separation of three slash four. It is the only, the very only ANC in the city of Washington, which is split. It shows you how arbitrary it was. It's time to correct the uh, uh, wrong. Thank you. Harry? Harry? You're, you're mute. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um, yes. Uh, Harry Barnes. I'm here. My wife is here with me, too. Cheryl, we uh, live on Aberfoyle Place in Barnaby Woods. Um, in fact, we live right next door to Elizabeth Patton, so we're familiar with, with her concerns as well. I think, I mean, from what I've heard this evening, it appears that the Hawthorne residents are in general, I mean, from this very small sample, uh, very content with remaining in Ward 4, whereas those of us who live in Barnaby Woods are much more inclined to uh, prefer rejoining uh, Ward 3. Our particular concern is with Connecticut Avenue and the redevelopment. And I do think that, I mean, I, I, we have lived here for <laughs> generations, practically. I mean, my, my <clears throat> parents moved here in 1957. I grew up here. Um, and Connecticut Avenue, this whole area has been my home for many years. I'm very concerned about the redevelopment of, of the area, and I simply think we should have a voice in that. Previous speakers have made that point. I don't really have anything substantive to add beyond that. Traffic. I'm also very concerned about traffic that has, um, the, the traffic situation on uh, our street, because we've become a cut through street between Western Avenue and uh, Tennyson over to Oregon Avenue, since Oregon Avenue has been shut off. And nothing that we have done so far, we, we've requested uh, traffic calming measures, whether stop signs, speed bumps, whatever, anything that would help with the traffic on our, we, this is a very quiet residential street and we have cars going through here at 45 miles, 50 miles an hour sometimes. It's it's dangerous. And so 
we would like an ANC that is supportive of, of that. Um, that's obviously not necessary one word or another, but we would like one that really is concerned with, with our issues here. I think that pretty well summarizes or sums up what I have to say, so I'll turn it back over. Thank you, Mary. Any questions from the commission on this? I, I, I have one. I, I don't know where Mr. King lives. I, I, he said his uh, kids went to Lafayette, but if he could just let me know, or let us know. I'm on 32nd Street between Aberfoyle and Worthington. And Harry, where did you say you lived again? I live on Aberfoyle Place, uh, right uh, at the foot of 32nd Street. So right by Mr. King. Okay. One thing, and I hope Commissioner um, Gosselin chimes in a little bit. We have been very concerned with traffic and traffic calming measures. We've done a lot of work on that. So we can talk about that offline, but we're we're on that it's very difficult we're i appreciate here. hearing that <laughs> yeah. oh yeah definitely we're, we're, we're testing things that don't work that's what that's what we're doing <laughs> everything we can and well, pulling out our hair my gosh. well we've also we've also been um putting up all the 20 is plenty signs um i certainly have done that along not nevada i still have some more signs i've been giving signs out so i've been telling people if you'd like some signs where you are Please let me know. Uh, I really I wish all people the way. on our street paid attention to them. Sure, of course. I mean, this is these people are all really the visuals. Pay attention. This is not a solution. People do pay attention to speed bumps, as you know. Yes, speed bumps or speed tables. I mean, these are all other means to slow down traffic. It is definitely something that this ANC is very concerned with: pedestrian safety. Okay. Um, any other questions? before I go to the written comments? Yep. Okay. And uh, Ferial just added in a chat, I'm just gonna have to piggyback on what she said. She said, come to Chestnut Street. And uh, Chestnut Street just underwent a um, sidewalk reconstruction uh, uh, project that went on for a long time, finally got it done. And uh, we had probably about two weeks ago, a uh, walk and sit to celebrate that project. Um, speed tables are on the street, a lot of traffic common measures. So definitely take a look at it. It's really nice. All right, so I'm gonna read, we got a, we got a lot of written comments. So um, please bear with me. I wanna make sure that these are on the record. Um, and I will start with some of the shorter ones. Uh, this is from Lanning Moldauer, and um, I believe he is Michael Zeldin's constituent. And he basically, a short comment says that he knows the full history of what led to the original redistricting um, and that he basically supports staying in Ward 3. A longer comment from Leonard Jeweler. Um, and he is in- Wait, Arnold, Excuse me, did he say stay in Ward 3? Yeah. What was the- Go back to Ward 3. Go back to Ward 3, yes. okay. Not stay in Ward 3. Right. <laughs> okay. This next one is Leonard Jeweler. And he is in Barnaby Woods. He says he's lived in Barnaby Woods since 1986. And his statement is, my name is Leonard Jeweler. I was born and raised in Washington in Ward 4 in Tacoma Park near Georgia and Alaska Avenues. I attended public schools at Tacoma Elementary, Paul Junior High, and Coolidge High. I used to take the streetcar down Georgia Avenue to Paul and Coolidge. I lived much of my early life in Ward 4. In 1986, I bought a house in Barnaby Woods, which was in Ward 3 at the time and would remain so until 15 years later when it was redistricted as appended to Ward 4, which up until that point was exclusively east of the park. Just as my earlier years were spent living and shopping near my neighborhood east of the park, my recent years are spent living and shopping west of the park, in particular along Upper Connecticut Avenue, 
which, in, which is less than a mile from my house. Recently, many changes have been proposed for the commercial strip along Connecticut Avenue, which is situated in Ward 3, but as a Ward 4 resident, my council member is not involved in these deliberations. This leaves me without representation in a local arena in which I should have a voice. I believe that the neighborhoods west of the park that are appended to Ward 4, Chevy Chase, Barnaby Woods, and Hawthorne should be reunited with Ward 3 so that we will have a voice on the city council that represents the interests of our neighborhood in matters related to the nearby commercial Connecticut Avenue and other common interests in proximity of Chevy Chase neighborhoods. We also cannot vote for the uh, State Board of Education representative for the middle and high schools our children attend in Ward 3. Absent a reunification of our neighborhoods in, with Ward 3, what mechanism is available for the approximately 8,300 residents of Ward 4 West to have a voice in a redevelopment of Connecticut Avenue? I argue that the three neighborhoods in Ward 4 West of the park be reunited with Ward 3 so that we can have a voice in a transformation of our neighborhood commercial district along Connecticut Avenue and in the selection of our Board of Education representative. Thank you for your consideration of this map. This will be added to the record. Uh, Lisa, just to clarify, after reading these things in, we will let people who did not sign up, yes. if, if any, um, speak. Is that right? Yep. Thank Go you. Them next. Um, this statement is from Edward Cohen. And, he's, and this was addressed to Commissioner Zeldin. He says, Michael, I live on Aberfoyle Place Northwest and am currently in Ward 4. Under the, and this is a CC slash BW. Um, I believe there is some redistricting map that has been prepared by someone in the neighborhood, maybe Callie Cook, I don't know. But um, I've seen these initials CC slash BW. Um, I have not seen the map, but he's uh, uh, referencing it in his statement. Our neighborhood would be reunited with Ward 3, of which we are a part when we moved here in 1983. The issues that most directly affect our neighborhood are in Ward 3, so it seems to me that it would make more sense if we were redistrict back to that ward. Thank you for your kind attention. Uh, Chevy Chase, Barnaby Wood. Okay, I'm not sure what map um, is being referenced because it hasn't come to the commission. This um, statement, very short, is from Amy Shear, and she writes also to um, Commissioner Zeldin. Hey, Michael, I support us being put back into Ward 3 so we have a better idea of what is going on in our neighborhood. This next statement is from former commissioner A. Playman. He's a resident of Hawthorne. And he writes, my name is A. Playman, and I've been a resident of Ward 4 since 2014. I was also an ANC commissioner from 2017 to 2020. I'd like to echo the comments of Randy Speck, ANC 34G's chair, when he recently spoke at the Ward 4 redistricting hearing. The neighborhoods of Hawthorne, Barnaby Woods, and Chevy Chase should remain part of Ward 4. Our ANC had the opportunity on multiple occasions to collaborate with residents east of the park because we were part of one ward. This was true with respect to the military road school and also with respect to issues of public safety as well. If the pandemic has taught us anything, it's the problem of one part of our city, community, country affects all of us. In that spirit, I hope you keep Ward 4 as is. It also just seems like it creates a lot of new issues with other Ward boundaries to put our part of Ward 4 back in Ward 3. Thanks for doing what you do and for taking this on. Next statement is from Jenny Malloy, and she is also a resident of Hawthorne. And she writes to me, she says, um, as a lifelong Hawthorne resident and native Washingtonian for 67 years, I am asking to please keep Hawthorne in Ward 4. For decades, Hawthorne was known for its landscape yards and suburban-like atmosphere, much like a Leave it to Beaver neighborhood where neighbors are, well, neighborly. 
our representation by Ward 4 DC council members in the last decade has been superb. We had Muriel Bowser, Brandon Todd, and today, Janice Lewis George. They do not forget us. Muriel Bowser became the DC mayor. She must have been doing something right for Ward 4 to get elevated to that position. Brandon Todd looked out for seniors and remembered all of us by our first names, making us feel special. His staff even came to my home and shoveled my sidewalk during the brutal snowstorms. I'll never forget that. Our new council member, Lewis George, took the time to have a Zoom virtual roundtable to hear Hawthorne residents' concerns about the closure of Beach Drive. She was attentive, amiable, and stood by us. She did not let politics direct her advocacy in the wrong direction. Our new ANC commissioner, Lisa Gore, has been a godsend to Hawthorne, and I didn't make that up. <laughs> 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 what a breath of fresh air to have somebody actually remembering Hawthorne when advocating for the community's betterment, unlike previous ANC commissioners. For the first time that I can remember, Hawthorne is in good hands all around, from ANC to the Ward 4 council member and all the way up to the mayor. Hawthorne is in a good place now in Ward 4. We have real advocates representing, representing us, giving us a voice and hearing our concerns. If they put us back in War Three, we will be forgotten, used and abused for redistricting only purposes and not have the excellent representation we have today. If you wanna take Barnaby Woods and put that in War Three, then talk to those residents and see how they feel about it. But as a lifelong Hawthorne resident and a native Washingtonian for 67 years, please do not ruin what we have today. Hawthorne is our little slice of heaven and we're happy to be in War Four where we are treated like people and not numbers on a vote ballot. That's Jimmy. Uh, let's see. John. Um, yeah. uh, <clears throat> everyone's at least just getting some more letters together. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, are we capturing the chat? Yes. Yes. Okay. 100%. Okay, great. This next um, letter is addressed to or statement, um, Commissioner Zeldin from John Funderburk. And he writes, Dear Michael, my name is John Funderburk. I, I live at 6636 31st Place Northwest in Washington, D.C. I'm writing to you ahead of tonight's meeting in strong support of the Chevy Chase Barnaby Woods area to be included in Ward 3. Born at Columbia Hospital for Women in Washington, D.C., native and keenly aware of how our citizens are represented from ANC to council to, and in parentheses, not Congress. The most important rights D.C. residents have or should have is a voice with our elected officials. As a resident of Ward 4, I don't feel like I have a voice. I feel being a resident of Ward 3 will give my family and neighbors more input on local issues that matter to us like the redevelopment of Connecticut Avenue in Chevy Chase Circle. I know many of my neighbors and fellow voters feel the same way, that our neighborhood should be reunited into War Three. Thank you for your attention. <clears throat> All right, this one is from Susan St. Maxens. Uh, it's also addressed to Commissioner Zeldin. We are writing to let you know that we endorse the proposed Chevy Chase slash Barnaby Wood map that is being considered in tonight's special meeting of the ANC 34G. That would put us back in Ward 3. We would like to be represented by you as part of the Chevy Chase community we live in. <clears throat> this one is from Pat Watson, um, addressed to Commissioner Zeldin. Michael, I've been a resident and registered voter residing at 6676 32nd place Northwest for 54 years. I highly support a return of our registration from Ward 4 to Ward 3. Formerly in Ward 3, I attended civic meetings and took part in political activity. I did not do so in Ward 4. I appreciate any endorsement you can provide for this to happen. And this is the last statement, and it is from Carol Grunwald. 
And it's a long statement, just to let you guys know. Dear commissioners, and I believe Carol sent this to all of the commission. Dear commissioner, our family has lived in Chevy Chase, DC for more than three decades. Our particular section of Chevy Chase has been in Ward 3 until 2001, when it was reassigned to Ward 4, along with the housing developments of Barnaby Woods and Hawthorne. Our family and many of our immediate Chevy Chase neighbors would like to be reassigned to and reunite, reunited with Ward 3. And we support bringing Barnaby Woods and Hawthorne back into Ward 3 as well. We understand that the reassignment from Ward 3 to Ward 4 had been made to create equitable voting districts, which of course we all favor. However, we understand that the council is now re-examining ward boundaries and that there may be a chance that we can maintain equitable voting districts while at the same time, return this portion of Chevy Chase and hopefully Barnaby Woods and Hawthorne as well to Ward 3. As lifelong Democrats and citizens who love our country, we abhor the unnatural and cynical redistricting that has been undertaken by Republicans throughout our country over many years. We strongly oppose gerrymandering undertaken by any party. Instead, we believe that voting district boundaries should follow as closely as possible with the natural physical features of the land and the history of our communities. Indeed, we believe that this is what federal guidelines on redistricting require. Chevy Chase DC, Barnaby Woods and Hawthorne are longstanding and distinct neighborhoods that are united in, by the commercial core of Connecticut Avenue and bounded by the huge natural feature of Rock Creek National Park. While we understand that the reassignment from Ward 3 to Ward 4 was made for good reason at the time, it has never felt natural for us to be part of Ward 4. Our neighborhood is Chevy Chase, but our ward assignment is with neighborhoods on the other side of Rock Creek Park and 16th Street areas that we rarely frequent. When considering boundaries for our wards, we should consider not only natural features, but also where the community people shop and gather, where their children go to school and where they can easily walk. The core of the neighborhood of Chevy Chase is a Connecticut Avenue commercial strip. This is where residents of Chevy Chase DC shop, eat out and use the library. The children of Chevy Chase, Barnaby Woods and Hawthorne go to school in Chevy Chase. People can easily walk within Chevy Chase, Barnaby Woods and Hawthorne but no one from these neighborhoods is walking a dangerous strip of military road through Rock Creek Park to get to the neighborhoods on the other side. Our ANC representative, Randy Speck, has said that he supports keeping our community divided into wards, stating that we get double the attention from our representatives that way. My family and neighbors strongly disagree with Mr. Speck's opinion, and we are shocked and dismayed that someone is supposed to represent us, his constituents would support the continued division of our neighborhood. On the contrary, since our reassignment to Ward 4, our small Chevy Chase neighborhood has felt almost like a pond between political rivals. The fact is that for the past several years, our portion of Chevy Chase has received abysmal representation from our former Ward 4 council member, Brandon Todd. To take one example, our immediate neighborhood organized a neighborhood walkthrough with Mr. Todd on May 16, 2016. Nearly three dozen residents of three streets in our immediate neighborhood spent hours showing Mr. Todd all the badly needed infrastructure repairs that we needed. After this whole production, not one repair on our list was ever made. Even after follow-up calls and emails were made to his office, he never came through for us and we still need these repairs today. Mr. Todd's newsletter featured residents and problems that exist in other parts of Ward 4 but our little slice of Chevy Chase and Ward, but not our little slice of Chevy Chase and Ward 4. And this makes sense really, because our neck of Chevy Chase is just a tiny portion of Ward 4 that includes the neighborhoods of Brightwood, Colonial Village, Crestwood, Fort Totten, Petworth, Riggs Park, Shepherd Park, 16th Street Heights, and Tacoma. We didn't get Mr. Todd's attention because Chevy Chase and Barnaby Woods and Hawthorne have different concerns that many of the other neighborhoods he was responsible for. The Ward 3 council member is much more attuned to our concerns because she represents Chevy Chase, our neighborhood. After our experience with the former Ward 4 council member, our family decided to act as though the Ward 3 council member was still our representative. So, representative. so in, since 2006, we have consulted with the Ward 3 council member on a variety of subjects of concern to us. 
including development plans for the Chevy Chase portion of Connecticut, Connecticut Avenue, the city's plan to provide charging stations for owners of electric vehicles in Chevy Chase, wildlife and animal protection issues, environmental issues, including pesticide drift from pesticide applicators, traffic concerns and other issues of great concern to our family and neighbors. Unfortunately, the Ward 3 council member can't help our street with infrastructure repairs because we're in Ward 4. But the staff of the Ward 3 council member has been very responsive to our other concerns that affect the greater Chevy Chase community. One very major concern that the residents of Chevy Chase, Barnaby Woods and Hawthorne share that Ward 4 neighborhoods do not is the future redevelopment of the Connecticut Avenue commercial corridor in Chevy Chase which is in Ward 3. Although our house is only nine tenths of a mile from the heart of this commercial core, we have spent a good deal of our lives in those few blocks. We as residents of Ward 4 have no representation in how the commercial district in our very own neighborhood is going to be developed. Because residents of Barnaby Woods, Hawthorne, and our little slice of Chevy Chase are in Ward 4, more than 8,000 residents whose commercial district is being redeveloped, will have no say in the future of our own little downtown. This division of our community into two wards is unnatural and is resulting in unfairness and conflict. We therefore support and ask our representatives to endorse the redistricting map. Okay, here we go. Submitted by Adam Taylor, <laughs> which restores the Ward 4 part of Chevy Chase as well as Barnaby Woods to Hawthorne to Ward 3. I don't know if um, Adam Taylor is in the meeting, but if someone has that redistricting map, it would be great for us to see it. So that's all the written comments. Um, with the Q and A, uh, do we want to take some of that and then move on to the audience? The Randy, anything in here we want to address real quick? Well, I I addressed one of them. I, I wrote the, the uh, typed the answer in. Um, this is the chat or the Q and A. There's a Q and A and the Q and A. Mainly looks like there's, comments as opposed. Yeah, they're, they're comments for the most part, I think. And I, I did answer the question Nina Dodge had about. Um, whether the ANC would be having leverage in the Connecticut Avenue redevelopment plan. And of course we will, we are very much involved in that. Not only the commissioners who are uh, in Ward 3, but the commissioners in Ward 4 are very intimately involved in that as well. And we'll all be um, considering the plan when it's finally, finally developed <clears throat> and we'll have a vote on it. But also, I want to add that also the, the Office of Planning on their website with the surveys that they've put out and so forth, they're not saying you have to say where you live in order to provide your input. They are taking input. And they have asked actually in some of the survey questions like, are you, do you live here or do you just shop here? Uh, and I think you can still certainly provide your viewpoint. So there's, they're not saying no to that. Um, I would also add box that, is open to all. I mean, all of that is open. I would add that uh, Councilmember Lewis George's staff has certainly been involved in the small area plan. I've been keeping, they've been monitoring it pretty closely. And I've had a couple of conversations yeah. about the small area plan. And I, you know, I think part of it definitely is what you, what you guys have mentioned, but I think also part of it is um, that council member is not accountable to the you know, ones of us that live in Ward 4. So I think part of it is voice, mm -hmm. but the other part of it is accountability. So I think that's important. Well, let, let me just emphasize though, that, that council member Lewis George has an equal vote on the council about approving the small area plan. Her vote counts just as much as Mary Che's vote does. So, I mean, we do it, it we can influence that vote living in Ward 4 because we she is accountable to us. Yeah. So do we have questions, any questions we want to read? And if not, are we going to take questions from the audience? We got questions from the audience. Um, Robert Gordon has his hand raised. Shall I make him a panelist? Yeah. yeah. 
um, Christina in Hope as well. Hey, Randy, um, Lisa, can I just intervene just for one second on something that's tangential? We yeah. have almost 50 people on the call. I don't know where everyone lives, but we are in need of a seventh ANC commissioner because Chris Rambaluti retired. So if any of you live, what's his what's his number? Three G07. Which is the area where what's the boundary? The southern military to Nebraska 41st or Reno to what? What Nevada? Um, it's on the ANC's uh, website, the, the maps of each of these places. So, um, okay. so seven. So if people who are here and interested in what's going on in the ANC, um, there's a vacancy. And so if any of you live in that district, please apply on, on the ANC um, website. It tells you how to do that. It's really straightforward. Um, so I would invite all of you concerned citizens, um, if any of you live in that uh, region to yeah. run for that seat. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt, but we had 50 people, so I thought we might as well advertise the, our need. Robert? Hi, uh, my name is Robert Gordon. Um, I live in Ward 3. Um, 20 years ago, I was an ANC commissioner, and I was a delegate to the uh, redistricting. Um, passions were running very high against hiving off uh, Chevy Chase, Barnaby Woods, and Hawthorne among most citizens. Um, Alan Beach and I argued strenuously against uh, the division. And I, um, uh, but it was pretty much a baked cake by the time uh, that came around. And uh, consequently, the the three uh, areas were hived off. Um, most of the arguments that I've heard tonight are uh, support what I think is correct and that it should be redistricted back into uh, Ward 3. Um, but I think it begs the question, and that is uh, what to do about um, the ANC. The ANC was a, a contrivance uh, to make it a three slash four G is sort of a compromise uh, at the time of the redistricting. But it, um, the way it's uh, formed today doesn't make sense to me. Um, and let me read from the district code. Uh, it says each advisory neighborhood commission area shall be located to the greatest extent possible within the boundaries of one election ward. An advisory neighborhood commission area may be located within two election wards if the location results from the limitation of census geography, which it doesn't, or if the location promotes a rational public policy, which it doesn't, including but not limited to respect for the natural geography of the district, which is obvious, neighborhood cohesiveness, or the development of compact contiguous and contiguous areas. So um, as part of this overall uh, discussion, I think we should think about uh, those commissioners who are now uh, in Ward 4 uh, joining uh, a commission in Ward 4 and that the uh, Ward 3 uh, commission be expanded to include other people, say, south on Connecticut Avenue. Those are my thoughts. Thank you. So I have a question. Can we wait until this panel is done? Michael? Oh, I didn't realize we were doing it a panel. I thought they were just yeah. one by one. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Okay, um, Ms. Dodge. Thank you. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I'm um, Michael Zeldin is my rep, uh, my immediate rep. And I regard Randy as my another rep. and. Um, I'm, I've been here for 30, over 30 years, and um, so I was here when things were shifted around. I didn't particularly mind then. Um, I grew up with a lot of shifting of boundaries in my life and um, in other countries. 
and um, I define community maybe in a slightly different way than, than some people. There is the immediate community, our cul-de-sac, then there's a broader circle around that, and then there are broader circles around that, and one of my circles goes to the other side of Rock Creek Park, and in fact encompasses all of DC. Um, I found, I'm for staying the way we are, um, the arguments that I've heard this evening, I wanted to know what, what the arguments were, because I really haven't followed this issue, so I'm not the most um, knowledgeable, but the main argument I heard, well, one was schools, um, school rep, and that I don't know much about. The other argument I heard was about representation and the redevelopment of, of Connecticut Avenue, and I put the question in the <clears throat> Q&A about whether we were represented in that de development discussion through our ANC. Uh, and uh, thanks, Randy and Connie, for clarifying. And um, I'm active in, in, um, with the council and our regulatory body, so I'm aware of how we, we get representation through OP Office of Planning and, and the council. Um, so I, I, I don't, I, I, I'm persuaded that we do have representation, in fact, in the Connecticut Avenue redevelopment plan, and it's up to each of us to, if we feel strongly about it, to be activists. Um, in terms of the, the argument on school rep representation, that I'll, um, I won't weigh in on because I really don't know and I haven't asked in the um, Q&A, but um, it would be great to have a response to that argument and, and by those of you on the ANC that know about it. Thank you very much. Ellen? Mute. Unmute. Yeah? You're I'm there. Up. You're there. Okay. Um, I just found out about the meeting and wanted to, I was very much encouraged by a friend to, to chime in. And so I don't have a very organized bunch of thoughts, but here we go. Um, I bought my first house in 1978 and it was just south of Walter Reed. So I lived smack in the middle of Ward, you know, Ward 4 then. Um, but um, my older son uh, went to Lafayette. Nobody on my entire street, including the person who taught at the local DC public school um, down the street, sent their children to that school. Everybody came over, came over to the other side. Um, and then I moved to, um, to Stevenson Lane, right by the park um, in 1986. So I've been here ever since. I wanna just mention very quickly that I have received no information in the past few years about anything with the ANC or with council member George or anything like that. I have, I've been totally detached from all of it. The parts where I have been attached, most of my life all this time and my children and all my neighbors centers around the Connecticut Avenue corridor. And one of the things I've always loved is you feel like you live in a small town because people you see are there. At Halloween, everybody goes there and the kids do trick or treating on the avenue. Over on the Connecticut Avenue corridor, there's the library, there's Magruder's, there's a post office, there are restaurants. There, the Safeway stinks at this point, but the pharmacy's great. Um, there's the community center. There's the Avalon is the only movie theater left in upper Northwest Washington. Everything else has closed at this point, which is pitiful. And that's, that's a sort of, I don't know, I connect it more with Ward, with, uh, Ward 3 than Ward 4 and it's, and it's it's run by the community. Um, I took a look um, last night at where equivalent services were in, in Ward 4. At this point, I'm having difficulty with transportation. And so, and I have friends who, when they come to me, all the seniors I know, very few of them drive anymore. And for me to be in Ward 4 at all, there is virtually no public transportation that will take me there enough, you know, enough of the way to someplace else. And even if those services 
were available there, which they in fact are not. And growing up, my kids could walk over to Connecticut Avenue to do something. I looked up last night, the distances between going to the Chevy Chase library or going to the closest libraries otherwise. And it's, it's impossible to, to go to any of the other ones. Um, the same with grocery, the same with, with almost anything else. I do would go to the other side to get gas because that's the only place it's affordable. But- Ellen, Ellen excuse me, your time is up. Oh! We, we were timing you. <laughs> Everyone has three minutes. If you could just wrap up your comments, Ellen. Pardon? Just wrap up your comments. Okay, well, I wanted to, to address the senior issue because it's much more difficult for seniors to get someplace else. Also, the lack of a senior program in Ward 3 is a huge lack. And when I've said anything about it, it's been, well, we don't have to answer to you because you're in Ward 4. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Christina? Good evening. Thanks for the opportunity to speak with you. Um, I live in Ward 4 on 28th Street, just south of Military Road. And um, I just wanted to come today to speak about the desire for Ward 4 to reunite with Ward 3. Um, I have lived in um, this area for about 10 years and um, I have contacted my council person regularly for issues in our community and have never, literally never received a response or, or help in solving the issues. Anytime that I need to reach out to a council person, I don't get a response from the Ward 4 council person. I get responses from the council people at large and they have been incredibly helpful to solving many of our community issues, but never, ever, Brandon Todd, the <laughs> Muriel Bowser, never have I gotten an appropriate response or repairs done in our community. And I very much support the idea of reuniting with Ward 3 so that we can all be one community and have um, an appropriate discussion about issues in our community. And in addition, there are a number of people that have argued that the park is not a physical barrier because we have roads. And that may be true if you have a car. I have children that ride bikes. I, I am a pedestrian and I walk and I cannot and under any circumstances easily get through the park to go to the rest of my ward where I can easily get to the rest of Ward 3. So I, again, I will strongly support the reuniting of ward of this portion of Ward 4 with Ward 3. And um, thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you, Christina. Um, for this panel, um, just a couple things I wanna um, say. Um, one of the, and Robert, you could, you know, if you wanna come back on and have more of a discussion with me, feel free to do so. But um, right now our census tracts are split, I believe in 1401 and 1402, um, which I believe are the Chevy Chase census tract. Is one of those also Barnaby Woods, Michael? Do you know? No, no, all it's all, they're all Chevy Chase. They are all south of Northampton Street uh, running down to Broad Branch. Okay. So just as a single, and I just want to make this as you know transparent for the community. I've talked to a couple community um, members about this. Any, I oppose strongly any split of um, the census or the uh, neighborhoods moving towards Ward Three and some staying behind in Ward Four, and primarily because of my single member district which is zero one, which is the furthest from the Connecticut Avenue corridor. That would, and I really strongly favor of having involvement in ANC 34G and having involvement on matters that happen on the avenue. That's very important for me to make sure my constituents have that voice. Um, and my fear is that any further splintering of the neighborhood cluster of Chevy Chase is gonna put my single member district at great risk. 
or what Robert said is going to another ANC in Ward 4. And um, that would be a huge challenge for us. Um, we are part of Ward 4 now, but the reason why we have such an, a voice and an avenue and things that happen on this side of our neighborhood, closer to the avenue, is because of our belonging to ANC 34G. And um, I do not want to do anything that puts that at risk. So I just want to make that really clear. Um, in terms of the school comment and State Board of Education, I think Ms. Dodge brought that up. So I'm a mom and my son attends Wilson. He's in the 12th grade. He went to the Lafayette Deal Wilson feeder pattern. And one of the things that has um, some moms and parents, families have brought up is that our State Board of Education rep is Frazier O'Leary when our kids are in Lafayette because he is the State Board of Education rep for Ward 4. When they move on to deal in Wilson, the State Board of Education rep is Ruth Wattenberg, who's the rep for Ward 3. So when they move on to middle and high school, we no longer have that, you know, voice, that voting power to vote for the rep that, you know, sits in the ward where our kids go to school. So that's kind of that issue. Um, and I want to really follow up on um, both Ellen's comment and Christina. Um, Ellen in particular, a lot of things that Ellen said um, hit me really closely because one of the things I really believe in is a connected community and a walkable community and a community that we can get to quickly. Um, we can walk, I can walk from my area up to the avenue fairly quickly, you know, but I, I walk kind of frequently. Um, the other thing she talked about was the difficulty in transportation. So we just lost the E6 bus, you know, during a pandemic. That was a big hit for our neighborhoods on this, these father SMDs. So connect, I mean, Western Avenue, Oregon Avenue, a tremendous hit for us. I live uh, on 31st Street off of Western and frequently saw so many folks that would get off right there at that corner stop, you know, walk up 31st Street and other parts on the E6. Our kids took the E6 to get to Lafayette Elementary School. So that was really important. And we had a lot of seniors that took that bus. I had a Twitter conversation with somebody today that was like, oh, you know, you guys up there in Upper Northwest don't have transportation. And, you know, one of the things that I was explaining to him is the impact of losing the E6 on our senior community. They were able to take that E6 bus and go right and get off right at the Safeway, right at the CVS or go to the Safeway pharmacy. They were right in the hub of our neighborhood, which is really critical when you get, you know, up in years and a lot of our seniors don't drive. They do depend on that public transportation. And if they take it, they're going primarily uptown. They're going up to the avenue. So I think that's really important for us to consider. The other thing that she brought up, which as an ANC we've advocated for, is the senior citizen, senior, senior center in Ward 3. We have a senior center in Ward 4, but I don't know if our seniors, I doubt very much that our seniors are going to that one in Ward 4. And, you know, transportation is an issue. It would be the closest one for them to go to would be the one, or if we ever got one, would be on Connecticut Avenue. So I think those are some really important points that uh, are definitely really close to me, the transportation issue and the senior issue. And um, that impacts us, you know, some one of the other speakers also brought up, uh, I can't remember his name, the whole transportation and just we're interconnected, regardless of we're single member district one, three, four, five, six, we're all in, interconnected because when people are speeding up through, you know, Aberfoyle or they're cutting over on, you know, Pinehurst Circle through Utah, they're coming from my single member district. They're coming from Beach Drive, hitting Chestnut and then they're barreling down Western Avenue and going all over the place. So we're interconnected in a lot of the issues that we try to tackle. Um, and that, that can be very powerful to tackle them 
as you know a larger political body. So I'll just make those comments on this panel. Robert, uh, I want to I want to make sure you understand that what I said was a modest proposal. I don't want to see uh, single member districts in Ward Four necessarily. Um, reuniting with war, strictly with Ward 4. But I think you made an argument that was uh, uh, quite elegant. And that was that um, most of the policy decisions and the policy work that you do relate to Ward 3. And if they relate to Ward 3 and you're an ANC commissioner in Ward 4, it seems to me that you should be reunited the entire neighborhoods should be reunited as one a body that deals with policy issues in Ward 3. That's, that's my, my modest proposal. Thank you. And you're correct. Our policies primarily, absolutely, issues in Ward 3. Michael? Right. So Robert, I wanted to ask you a question, if I may, please. And um, that is, I've been trying to gather as much information as I can about what led to our 20, year depart 20 years ago, our departure from Ward 3. I hear things with respect to Ward 2 and former council member Evans and how that came to pass. And if you were present during that conversation, could you uh, fill us in on that? Because if, as I understand it, there was sort of a, a Faustian deal um, cut to add territories or take out territories from two, and that led to our split, I do not want to institutionalize that which may have, you know, some in quotes corruption at its at its or gerrymandering at its heart. So if you could talk to that, that would be appreciated from me. Um, I was a, a freshman uh, commissioner at the time, and things were zipping past me. But the map that was decided on, and, and it was a, uh, a convocation of um, uh, ANC uh, commissioners and others from all over um, Ward 3, um, and it looked like the map was just already baked, already created and it was just a matter of people um, uh, certifying it. Now, I don't know, I, I really never knew what the politics was, why that piece of Ward 3 was um, split off, uh, truthfully. The person who would really know is Alan Beach. Um, uh, although he now lives, I think he lives in Maryland um, and uh, if you if if you'd really like to know, I can get in touch with him and and get a history of that. Can we? I, I personally just, would like to. I would personally like to to know that because it informs my decision making about how to address this issue. Um, does Gary Thompson know he's a part of the attendee list? Would he know? No. Okay. I don't think so. Gary was not on the commission then. He was uh, only, yeah, only 10. Yeah, he was not there 20 years ago. Okay. Right. Um, Mary Rouse said she can answer the question. So can we have Mary answer that question if she knows the answer? She has to be elevated. I'm, I'm trying. I think I'll just have to, to allow her to talk again as she did before. There you go. Okay. okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Am I okay? Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, 20 years ago, I was heavily involved in this effort to try to stop the uh, Kathy Patterson's effort. It was perceived to be a uh, driven by Jack Evans, who didn't want to take Glover Park into Ward 2. 
as many of you know, Burleaf is already in Ward 2, and the Glover Park community really would have been the ideal way to increase the population uh, in Ward 2, but Jack Evans refused to take Glover Park. And so I, I imagine he and Kathy Patterson had some discussions. We really um, came down hard on Evans and Patterson at the time. There were many, many people, hundreds of people in this community who were very, very angry about what happened. Um, Kathy Patterson gave up one of the highest voting precincts in the city, Precinct 51, the Lafayette Precinct. Um, it wasn't the highest, but it was always one of the highest. It, can maintain, it is, continues to be one of the highest. She was very foolish to do that. Adrian Fenty was only too glad to accept it uh, because he had higher ambitions. So um, I believe that's sort of what happened. And um, I wonder if Kathy Patterson, um, you know, regrets it to this day, who knows? But um, that's pretty much what happened. But why, did, why did Evans, Mary, why did Evans not want um, Glover Park? Was it, did it seem like that, that community was not likely to vote for him and that it was um, driven by self-interest? What was the, well, it was always driven by self-interest. Um, I think that Jack Evans perceived his ward to be more like, he, he wanted more of the federal land downtown, the White House, some of those uh, executive buildings. I think that was what some people speculated. I don't know what was in Jack Evans' mind. He did write a, a Northwest Current editorial after I wrote one um, defending his actions, and we can dig that up. But um, it was really not, um, it was a selfish um reason and it really had nothing to do with what was best for his ward. Glover Park was much more like Burleaf in Georgetown than um, some of the areas that he ended up getting. He was looking for power, I think, and probably uh, co contributors to his uh, runs for mayor and other political aspirations that he had. Um, he was interested in, in getting more business, probably business donations. I'd say it's hard to say. There's some people like Keenan Keller who speculated on it with us. Um, a lot of people were trying to figure it out. So is it, would it be a correct statement to say in effect that we were collateral damage to that deal? Yes. That we were not, there, there was no, the question I'm asking, I guess, is that in a leading way, but there, there was no deliberation saying it would be in the best interests of wards three and four if this occurred, but rather because of this deal between Patterson and, and Evans around War II, Relief, and uh, Glover Park, um, they had to do something on our end. And so we just got stuck with this, the byproduct of that decision. I, that would be my perception that, it, that the neighborhood was sacrificed. I can't understand why Kathy Patterson would do that. I really don't. I don't know whether she was beholden to, to Evans for something else. Uh, only she can explain it. At the time, she called it a she actually, you know, people were, were accusing her of trying to do social engineering. And, you know, she made comments about that. But uh, Ward 3 ended up being wider because of it. And um, I think that made a lot of people very unhappy. So um, I think that it was never in our community's best interest. And um, Kathy Patterson sold us, you know, down the river. It really wasn't something that was in all of our best interest. And so, really Lisa, I, I was so in the room and... Um, there was only one proposal, and the pro proposal seemed to be, you know, already a done deal. So I, I really didn't know what was going on behind the scenes, but I did know in that room, there really was no argument. So Lisa, um, statistically, then this, the the outcome here was that the African American vote was diluted by um, by this creation of um, uh, three, four that we're in now? I don't think there's too much question about that. And that's the one thing that um, I was um, listening for to come up in the uh, comments. And I don't know if people know how much the percentage of black residents in Chevy Chase or Ward 3, how much the percentage of residents in Ward 3 dropped in terms of black residents. Um, at the time, and this was back, you know, when the redistricting occurred, so early 2001, um, the percentage was 6.3, roughly 6.3, I believe. I sent that to you earlier, Michael. And after redistricting, it dropped to 5.1. So that is a, that's a significant drop. 
Um, definitely one of the issues that I'm looking at with our current boundaries is, you know, our single member districts that are in the ward four populace are very diverse. And um, we have a pretty good minority population, including black residents. And uh, that ori original redistricting absolutely diluted that. Um, we lost that. I would like to see that back. Um, and then we also have Lafayette Pointer that was part of that. So, you know, to have that dedicated land that was original slave land, part of the War Three area and to get moved out um, doesn't really sit, you know, well with me. Um, it's almost like if someone would come along and say, would you take historic Anacostia out of Ward 8? Um, so we don't have that uh, in three where it originally sat. And, uh, but to answer your question, Michael, yeah. Can I say one other point? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I, I have a lot of actually uh, uh, some history on this. I have it in my house and I'd love to uh, bring it somewhere, maybe the historical mm -hmm. society. But basically a group of us got together across the city and we formed something called the Citizens Redistricting Plan. And we met with people in all eight wards um, and down at Cadavez and on near U Street um, to discuss how we as citizens could create a redistricting map that would keep communities together like Brooklaw, um, Fairlawn, uh, Kingman Park, Chevy Chase. And we produced a map and we got coverage in the post. We got, um, it was introduced to the city council. Jim Grant was the only one of the 13 council members who voted to, um, to give it uh, some life. And it went on to a second reading and of course failed, but we got some coverage in the post about it. And uh, we went on to um, file a lawsuit against the city. We formed an organization called the Chevy Chase Civic Association. Um, and uh, you can see those uh, court records today. We work with uh, Fraser Walton in Kingman Park. Um, and I think he was one of the attorneys that represented us. And of course we lost, but that's, that's on the record, um, that lawsuit against the city about the redistricting. And Mary, just, just, just to be clear, you're talking about back at the beginning of the, of, of the 2000s, is that right? Not 2001, now. yeah, the 20, year, 20 years ago when this redistricting occurred, it did not occur 30 years ago, it occurred 20 years ago. Chevy Chase was split 20 years ago. Do we want to do we want to take the people who have their hands up yeah. and because we need to get yeah. on a uh, discussion among ourselves too yeah. uh, so we have a we have a fair amount of business still to do yeah. okay can i elevate those people and yeah yeah put the others uh, back into the, okay yeah, i want i want to say thank you to robert and mary for that history it was very helpful Just a second. I'm sorry, I'm slow at this. I was gonna say, Randy, you need help. <laughs> I do. Uh, for one thing, it's not. It's kind of like a delay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna elevate. Bill, Carolyn, and Lee. Bill, you want to go ahead? Carolyn. Or whoever. Yes, I would love to. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Bill Hoffman. Uh, my wife and I have lived in first Ward 3, then Ward 4 uh, since 1982. And um, what I'm hearing tonight uh, reinforces my feeling that any, any real input that we're gonna have to what concerns me a lot, which is the redevelopment of the Connecticut Avenue gateway from Livingston to the circle, um, to, to get any voice in that, we really have to be in Ward 3. And it, it makes a difference to me. I'm, I'm part of a group at my church at Chevy Chase Press uh, 
doing a, a an inclusivity and racial justice review of the church. And those of you on this call, I'm sure know the, the sordid history of the Chevy Chase Land Company and the total white exclusion and how the land for Lafayette and Deal and Wilson were taken by eminent domain to uh, get rid of black farmers in the area and black community people and turned into schools for white kids. Um, and what I'm hearing tonight from a number of people is, oh, we really do have input into what's going on on Connecticut Avenue. But it's, to my mind, all of that is at sufferance. It's a question of what individuals are listening, but it's not a matter of right. We don't have representation in Ward 3, which is where all that development is going to be taking, taking place. And that is the community that I walk to. It takes me 15 minutes to walk from my home to, to, uh, to my church, uh, to the shopping areas along Connecticut Avenue. I can't walk to the 16th Street or to Georgia Avenue. It's not a natural place uh, for me to look at as my local neighborhood. And, um, you know, every so often we have uh, Senator Van Hollen who comes to the church and talks to, talks to people and he says, oh, if, yeah, if you ever want anything, let me know. We're still the District of Columbia. We don't have, we don't have the right to have any senator say anything on our behalf. And I feel like that's the same way living in Ward 4 for the things that matter to me, which are all happening in Ward 3. So, I, and, I, and my sense is that the community, a lot of the community is formed by parent groups and people that you meet because your kids went to school together. And that's all, that's all schools in Ward 3. For me, so I'm I'm hoping that we will that we will uh, be able to rejoin Ward Three. Thanks very much. Thank you, Carolyn. Thanks. Um, so uh, I'm here tonight. I actually have two map proposals, and I will say that when I started out this um, advocacy. Um, opposing our ANC chair that uh, to remain in Ward 4. I was all about reuniting all of Ward 3 because I think fundamentally it's wrong. We do not have representation because we exist outside of the boundaries of both of these wards. We might as well live in Rock Creek Park. We are outside of the Broad Branch boundary and we are outside of the 16th Street boundary. In terms of representation, we're 7% of Ward 4's population. We don't make or break Council Member George, George's re-election chances. We have no accountability for Mary Che because we aren't in her ward. So whether we agree or disagree with her fundamentally on issues, we can't talk to her about it. We can't advocate for our positions. So when it was clear that there was no way they were gonna move all 9,000 of us, uh, many people quit. I didn't because I thought fundamentally it worries me about the Chevy Chase Redevelopment, as has been expressed unanimously on this call, uh, or I shouldn't say unanimously, certain by Barnaby Woods and, and parts of Chevy Chase, is that um, I think that we should consider that if not all of us can go back, could we do a compromise? Could a portion of us go back in the um, event that by setting a precedent that 20 years in, this is a flawed structural relationship for all of the reasons that have been outlined tonight. And by making a case and having this council actually acknowledge and make a movement to start bringing back Ward 3 in a phased approach, then we can then look at bringing more and hopefully the rest of us back 10 years from now. But what I worry about is if none of us are back, my greatest fear is all of us, and having been the commissioner for Barnaby Woods and Hawthorne, we drive to the avenue. If the density increases such that we can parking, it exceeds parking. We are going to be uh, theoretically or practically shut out from Connecticut Avenue, our town square. 
um, where we live all of our lives has been expressed by many people that testified with me at the citywide hearing. I went back a second time after my Ward 4 hearing that you may not be aware of, and it was completely on the redevelopment. And what worries me is we, if we don't take the chance now to go back a piece, and I have two possible maps, um, then we run the risk that if the density does increases, increase, that perhaps Ward 3 goes even further west. So, they, so the council comes in and takes even more of Chevy Chase out because we've allowed this, and it'll now be 30 years with no challenge to this. So I would strongly urge Commissioner Gore and Commissioner Zeldin to think about what is really important in the, not just the end of our nose, but like the broader picture of planting a seed that we want back in 10 years. Thank you. Let me just address that. Um, so part of the immediate concern here, Carolyn, which I'm sure you're aware of, is um, the ANC boundary redistricting process and the single member district redistricting process. That's on the plate right now. So I definitely understand your point about that long-term view, but um, I am probably, that's one of my hardest lines is just, I cannot let my single member district be sitting out there on the island and we have to have some kind of way to insulate us from potentially being redistricted to but in some, okay i'm sorry go ahead yeah to another anc okay so that's why i'm kind of saying that okay because i would say that i think hawthorne would connect up along oregon avenue which in some ways makes a very strong boundary um here I also do think it's interesting, Lisa, from where we stand, how, how divided our two neighborhoods are. I mean, it's really surprising to me that there has been, I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't necessarily think this is a representative um, sample of Hawthorne. Here I, can tonight. Tell you, I can tell you as a commissioner, it's not. Yeah, okay, because back when I was one, it wasn't either. Um, and so I, that troubles me, but I just wanna say that I created two maps. So the one map is, um, is honoring the residents that were angry on the listserv, that um, we were advocating for all of four, three, it's because we didn't wanna leave anybody behind. So I created one map that had Barnaby Woods and a part of Michael Zeldin's district and a little slice of Commissioner Higgins district. And then because I had advocates from Hawthorne saying, we need to go back there I made a second map, which has Hawthorne, Barnaby Woods, and a little less, much less of, of Michael Zeldin's district that could connect. And the challenge for us is that to maintain the redistricting principle of contiguity, we have to touch the Ward 3 boundary in right. some ways. So with the map that would take Hawthorne, Barnaby Woods, and Chevy Chase, that would be 3,031 residents. Lee Mayer, um, alluded to the fact from the report earlier that there is an exception to that plus or five uh, percent um, that can be made if you have a legitimate argument. And it could be like the geographical boundary that I think a Andrew Rosen had spoken about. And also this sort of like disconnecting of neighborhoods, communities of interest. So, I, and I think that fundamentally the equal representation argument, which sort of underpins all of the redistricting process is so that everybody can have a single vote but actually we don't have a vote in just in Ward 4 West. We're like this little, you know, we are an island, but it's because we're outside of both of these boundaries and because we're such a small percentage of four and council member George and her predecessors did not have any say over this jurisdiction. How can we hold her accountable for anything? I mean, that wouldn't be fair. And it, she's not gonna overstep her boundaries. And then Mary Che, how can we hold her accountable for ignoring us because she's not gonna overstep Broad Branch. So we're just sitting here on this like little island and I'm like, this isn't right. So that's why I came with these maps because I thought, okay, if these could be viable amendments, which the one that falls, um, that doesn't have Hawthorne is a viable amendment in as far as redistricting principles and as far as a population, 2,776 residents is what I, we were given. Uh, and so um, the, the Barnaby Woods part of, of uh, um, Chevy Chase, which is Michael Zeldin's district, um, fits 2,691. With Hawthorne though, it's 3,031. I don't think this is a huge sell 
for us to make for what they have left us in for the past 20 years. And I would strongly urge this commission. I mean, I, okay, I would say as a former commissioner, I think we need to organize this community and we need to do a full out reunite Ward 3 now. Like we have, there have been commissioners that have very influential positions because Ward 3 and 4, which we are, are taken very seriously. It is time that we use our clout and our service to our city and say, no more. This is our 20th anniversary. We tried this, it hasn't worked and we want back. And then if that doesn't fall back, then we look at these maps and we say, can you begin a phased approach so that in the event, Ward 3 is you're trying to increase density and you're not looking at the 8,000 or 9,000 of us on this end, you are going to have a portion of us and we all are going to keep this door open and in fact, kick it open so that we are not forgotten. Because I, I just want to say, I am very worried about us as Ward 3 constituents right now for all practical purposes, that the new incoming that we don't even know how many people will come to Chevy Chase, but they will then become the Ward 3 stakeholders that will then keep us, keep the door shut for good on us ever coming back. And I don't think we can take that chance in this next decade, particularly because of the article about the Office of Planning's director who is retiring and he's so proud of the accomplishment that he's offering tax incentives to develop in wealthy neighborhoods. That's gonna be here, it's coming this decade. And that concerns me a lot because we aren't gonna have a voice for another decade. So I would really urge you all to reconsider your position of taking no position and actually let's, really get the community out because I think there's would be a lot of support for getting representation and the urgency being the Connecticut Avenue redevelopment. Thanks, Carolyn. Thank you. Lee? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I'm all over the place. This is, this is the most interesting Zoom meeting I've ever been, been engaged with, ever listened to. Uh, first of all, let me talk to Mac Zeldin. I have way back when, for 10 years, I was an ANC person in the district which Randy Speck now has. And for three or four of those years, I was a chair. Therefore, I knew Phil Mendelson pretty well. I even knew his Jim Nathanson pretty well. And one of the things I can remember about Jim Nathanson was for the 1990 redistricting, he did not want to lose Hawthorne for the same reason that Lisa Gore is concerned, because you're going to reduce the African-American representation in Ward 3. And that's exactly what's happened. Now, also, Michael, getting to your point about Kathy Patterson, and Mary Rouse is basically correct. Let me just add a couple of things. I don't think Kathy Patterson gave a damn about the area around Lafayette School and so forth, Barnaby Woods and so forth. It was said at the time that she was very much beholden to, I think, her chief of staff who lived in Palisades. One of the ridiculous arguments that she had for why people don't want to join Ward 4, people east of Broad Branch Road, was that they will lose their preferred parking spaces. At a public meeting, in which Phil Mendelson chaired, I said there is one there is one preferred parking space east of Nevada Avenue. And that's right across the street from Lafayette School. That put Kathy Patterson's <laughs> nonsense to bed about preferred parking spaces. Now, one of the things I notice is that there is a great, from this, this very, very good Zoom, there is a great deal of concern about the redevelopment of Upper Connecticut Avenue. And I'm, just, I'm delighted to see this. In the prior ANC, though I was not a member of the advisory, commission, advisory committee on purpose because I wanted to deal with other parts of Ward 3 as an urban planner, retired urban planner. I was very strong in terms of getting affordable housing. My problem with the split of ANC 34G as contrasted to how the Office of Planning 
treats the whole AN4 3G. You're part of Rock Creek West, which is the other side of the park. And you're viewed sort of as, well, no, exaggeration, sort of as those evil people who generate all kinds of inequities here, there, and everywhere. I am concerned, very concerned with the split. I personally would like to see a, a concentrated process, affordable housing, not just in Upper Connecticut Avenue, but also over there in Friendship Heights and up and down Connecticut and Wisconsin Avenue. But I agree with Carolyn that if you don't do something about at least making a noise about bringing Ward 3 together, it may be too late 20 years from now or 10 years from now. Okay. I, think, I think it's gonna stay the way it is, to be honest about it. But I think you should make somewhat of a case. I have tremendous respect for Randy Speck. For example, at Ingleside, I don't see how, as an urban planner, I don't see how anybody could have done anything better than what he's done. It's fantastic. I live three, two and a half blocks from Ingleside. I may end up living there, I don't know. Um, but I don't, I don't agree with his very programmatic approach. Well, we've been able to, we've been able to work with Ward 4 and Ward 3, we're stronger in that way. What happens? What happens when you don't have a Mary Che? What happens when you don't have a councilman in Ward 4, such as a president one, who's willing to listen? And those type of things happen. So I guess what I'm saying is I very much agree with Carol. Now is the time to go after it. You probably won't succeed, but you probably made a noise. And that's important. And people do listen to words, people in, in Chevy Chase and so forth. Obviously, they listen. Just look at what's happened with regards to the uh, issue over here at the corner of Utah and Nebraska, four blocks from where I live. Please, can you, you, know. can, can you so wrap that's, it up? That, that's, my, that's my spiel. Thank you. Randy, in the interest of, of you know what we have to still do, can we try to make sure that the comments as helpful as they are, unless there are follow-up questions, be at the three minute mark that we set? I've been trying to do that. <laughs> but I don't think there are any more. Is that correct? No, there are no more, I think. I think that there are no, no one else has a hand raised. And we have nothing to answer in the uh, Q&A or so we can go on to the next section? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's save the Q&A in chat. Uh, Peter, can I just ask a question? Is there anybody on the phone? There, there's one person on the phone, but not with a... a, a I, guess I, I guess I don't know how you raise your hand with the She's phone. a Hawthorne <laughs> resident, and I think it would be important for Commissioner Gore to hear as well. Um, she did try to call last meeting and was not able to... Um, speak because she couldn't figure out how to get in here. And I will say that I think that's really a challenge that uh, Office of Planning alluded that they can't, the outreach to Barnaby or Chevy Chase has been, uh, that's the one, I guess, one of his two regrets. And I, I do think that I've heard from several seniors that are not able to participate in these meetings because they're all on Zoom. And this worries me that she's again being left out of her comments. So Randy, can you elevate 202-362-4935? And let her speak. Yeah. I, I hope. Okay. How do you unmute a phone? She will have to do that herself. Uh, wow. Is it star six? Someone said star six earlier. Star six. Yep. Did you hear that? Star, try to star six on your phone. right below the seven yeah. yeah i have to get a phone <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Do you, do you, do there you, you go. She got it. Good, 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 good. Ma'am, are you there? Hello? You can talk. You're unmuted. She's now muted again. No, she's unmuted again. Do we, what's her name? Carolyn. We've lost Carolyn, so we don't know what's. Ma'am, on the phone, could if you can hear us, can you speak? Well, I think she definitely did the story six because she's unmuted. So. She's unmuted, yeah. I'm a little yeah. confused about what their what situation is. Margaret, Margaret Flanagan. That's who it is? Margaret, yeah. Margaret, you're unmuted. Can you hear us? When this happens, I feel like running, <laughs> running yeah. the <laughs> out the door, down the street. <laughs> where they are. I'm like, oh. <laughs> we'll but, get you. We'll get you, Kate. Uh, <laughs> we, we we should just do what Carolyn said. Remember, we had the same problem with with John Higgins, and he couldn't through. She, well, Margaret, Margaret, if Margaret calls Carolyn and Carolyn puts it on speakerphone, then we can hear it through Carolyn's phone. So why don't we do that? Because it's getting late. Uh, yeah, no, I, think I think we lost. I think Carolyn's no longer on the line. No, she's there. Uh, she's yeah, there. Carolyn is still there. Yeah, she could just be elevated again. An, atten an attendee again, but yeah, panel panelist. You mean? Carolyn, mm -hmm. I made her. A okay. Panelist. Mm -hmm. I made her a, a, an attendee. Sorry, Randy. I I you can you can demote me if you want. You no, probably. but Carolyn, what we're going to try to do is ask you to talk. Ask Margaret if she yeah. could call you, and you hold the phone up to the. Yep. Yeah. So because she is, she, she is, she is, she is, seems to be unmuted, but she's saying nothing. So, um, do you do you know her number? I what do. Number? Yes, I'm seeing it right there, and I do know her number. Let's yeah, see. the problem is that she's on the line. Yes. Oh, I know, and it's going to ring busy. <laughs> Margaret, hang up the phone. No. no. <laughs> <All right. laughs> she can hear something's happening. She can hear us because she did it. I, I made Elizabeth Patton a, a panelist too. She had her hand raised. Okay. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. Elizabeth, do you want to go ahead while we're waiting on Margaret? And Elizabeth, you have to unmute yourself. Thank you. I'm just saying, my husband and I, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, my husband and I have lived in this fabulous home for 35 years. And I, I, I always say I'm going to die in this house because I just love this neighborhood so much. And, you know, it's... Um, you know, it seems like such a long time ago when we became part of Ward 4. And ever since then, it's sort of all a blur. It just never really made sense to me. And, you know, I just, I never understood why. But I really, really feel as though, you know, when you look at the demographics of, of you know, the map, it just seems to make so much more sense for us to be back in Ward 3. And I don't know, I just have not ever felt connected to Ward 4 ever since that that shift happened. I, I just feel like where I shop and what, you know, everything about is all about Ward 3. And I just want to, I just want to, 
I think no matter who you are and where you are, you want to feel like you have a voice, you know, on where you are. I just want everyone to feel like they have a voice. And, you know, I just, I think this is our one opportunity to go back. I don't feel like it's that huge of a deal to do this, to make this shift. Um, and I've really appreciated everyone that's weighed in tonight and Joe King and, um, you know, um, 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 Harry Barnes and uh, Lee Mayer and Ed Cohen. I just feel like these are people I have known for over 35 years that have been my neighbors that feel the same way I do. So that's all I want to say. Thank you so much. I'm done. Thank you. Uh, Thank where you. do you live? Where do you live, Elizabeth? I, I live on uh, 3201 Aberfoyle Place. Okay. Yeah, I've been here for 35 years. And like, I just love this neighborhood so much. That, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yeah. I've been there. <laughs> you have <laughs> no i just love it here so much and you guys thank you randy and thank you all of you for all you are doing for all of us and all i want is for everyone to feel like they're represented you know equally and properly and respected that's all i care about is respect okay that's all i don't care about little old me i just want everyone to be respected and to be listened and heard. That's all. I love you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Carolyn. Oh, you're okay. mute. Yeah. Okay, Margaret, you're you're on. You're live. Talk loud. Thank you for taking my call. I was trying to talk to you all, but you couldn't hear me. Um I just had a couple of points. I have lived here 67 years in the same house. I came home from the hospital after I was born. Um, I favor, I live in Hawthorne. I live right on Rock Creek Park, I face the park. And I really do want to support moving all of us back. But if we can't, I would support moving part of us back. It would set a precedent, which I think is something that would be very important for the future. Um, it also concerns me greatly about the Connecticut Avenue redevelopment. I'm a senior that has severe lung disease, and if I can't park next to a store, I can't go there. So my shopping is limited to Safeway, and if there's all kinds of messing with the underground parking and you have to circle and all the fumes from the garage, if you can't, what access do you have while it's being built? And right now, it's hard for me even to shop, but I'm able to do it with the handicapped parking places. And I have to rest a couple of times just to fill up the top of my hand, small hand cart. So everything I do is on Chevy Chase. Um, and I'm very concerned about impact and and how you know we'll be as a community and with the traffic problem that's probably gonna be worse, that's another great concern. So I I thank you for the time and I hope you can reunite us. So thank you very much. Margaret. Any others with their hands raised? Okay. How should we proceed in this next part of the meeting? Well, a lot of uh, great discussion. 
Randy, you want to come back on camera? Yep. So this is, uh, I mean, this is, it's not easy. It's not easy. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was strongly one way, then I'm strongly another way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is uh, not an easy conversation. There's a, there's a lot at stake. I mean, I agree with um, one of the panel members said, um, you know, this is uh, basically saying this is a serious issue and definitely lives are impacted by it. It's not just having, you know, a say so in something that's happening on an SAP. Um, it's how we navigate our community. It's you know, how we navigate school systems and officials. It's how we advocate for things and, and what's the best way to do that um, as defined by a community. So um, we do have a resolution um, that I prepared. I don't know if you got, and we're so bound by time. So one of the things uh, Kathleen talked about was maybe more time to actually do some hard data mm -hmm. collection. We just don't have time. We really don't. And I am in favor of a, a resolution from the ANC. So just to let you know everyone know that I did prepare a resolution. Um, just like many ANCs across the city, there's quite a few resolutions and quite a few letters from ANCs all over the city. Um, and they've expressed, you know, a variety of opinions from just making sure that, you know, a commissioner is on the redistricting process to advocating for LBGTQ community and not wanting them, you know, affected and wanting, you know, those communities protected. Um, the prison population wanting them protected. I mean, there's, there's no rhyme or reason how ANCs across the city are voicing their opinion in the redistricting process. And I really advocate for, and that's why I drafted a resolution for the ANC to do the same. I think where we're definitely gonna run into a problem is the final language of the resolution. So I will just go over that, the resolution, so the community knows what I'm talking about. Um, but it's basically a resolution on the ward boundaries of uh, Chevy Chase and the entirety or portions of Chevy Chase and the entirety of Barnaby Woods and Hawthorne. The beginning of the resolution kind of goes over the redistricting process and um, the requirement for the redistricting of ward boundaries. We talk about the 2020 census data indicating that ward three and ward four had stable population levels um that didn't require changes legally um we talk about the boundaries being in place for the past 20 years and you're you're correct it is a 20-year boundary and we talk about the initial transfer of chevy chase barnaby woods and hawthorne from wards three to ward four and that it caused basically consternation within a community so we wanted to put that history in there we also acknowledge that as part of Ward 4 for the past 20 years, we built really positive bridges with our fellow Ward 4 commissioners, um, ANC community and uh, council members. Mm -hmm. We then move and transition into the subcommittee redistricting hearings. Um, and we kind of lay out a little history there. Um, about attendance um, and some of the issues with when we found out the possible, or basically when we found out the Ward 3 council member proposed boundary changes to the Ward 4 council member. Um, we also put in the resolution about the incremental change, which is basically the potential to ad adopt census track 1401 and 1402 to be transferred back to Ward 3, but the subcommittee's um, opposition to that. The next portion of it is kind of history in terms of the statement from the Racial and Social Equity Standing Committee and the 
standing committee did not take a position. It was neutral in the position, but it wanted the ANC to, um, it wanted to highlight two things to the ANC, both regarding equity. So basically for the commission to reject anything that, you know, discussed about uh, we should go back or stay in Ward 4 or go back to Ward 3, actually, because Ward 3 is more racially homogenous. And then we also talked in that statement about um, elevating the voice of Black residents because of the issue in the past with diluting the voting uh, strength of Black residents in Ward 3. Uh, the next thing we talked about is a statement from council member Janice Lewis George, who wrote a very, very nice letter to the community of AN3, ANC 34G, um, expressing her desire to remain our commissioner, I mean, our council member, and stay under her leadership. And then, kind of near the end, we talk about um, the last meeting that we held and the meeting today that we organized. and discuss the six principles that guided the subcommittee on redistricting. So equal representation, racial, equitable, compact and contiguous boundaries, communities of interest being kept together, whole census tract being kept together and war continuity and stability. Um, we also acknowledge in the resolution that changing in ward boundaries can definitely and will have ramifications across the district. Next part of the resolution is actually to be filled in. Um, we discussed preliminarily that we held a special meeting and this was a section that we were gonna highlight some of the um, most important arguments that the community members made. So that's also documented in the resolution. And then under the resolve part, where we're going to have to discuss is basically our thoughtful consideration to everything that's been said tonight, including the statements from council member Che at the previous meeting, um, the written statement of council member Lewis George, the written statement of the racial and social equity standing committee, and taking all of that within the framework of the six principles on redistricting. And um, I am asking for the commission to come up with the re recommendation of whether it's in the best interest to keep the neighborhood cluster of Chevy Chase in one ward or two wards. And when I say neighborhood cluster, that might be a OP term, but the neighborhood cluster is Chevy Chase, Barnaby Woods and Hawthorne. And I think part of that cluster, I don't know the history of how OP defines that, but I'm sure it has a lot to do with not only natural boundaries, but also probably commercial corridor. Uh, the other thing that we ask in the resolution is that we stress the importance of each single member district to be retained in ANC 34G. Um, and we say that is a top priority. And it, it really is. We um, say that it provides a significant mechanism for residents in these areas to have a political voice in the entire neighborhood cluster and specifically the Co Connecticut Avenue commercial corridor, which is currently developing a small area plan. So with that, I move this resolution into uh, discussion. Do I have a second? Do you have a position though? Is it, is my position is that, yes, I do. Okay. My position is, and let me explain my position. <clears throat> my position is, um, and I've thought really hard about this. I really do feel like overall looking at, um, and, and let me just talk about the Hawthorne situation. Um, I'm not new to Hawthorne. I've been here for, a long, over 20 years. And uh, I feel like as a commissioner, even though I've been a commissioner for Hawthorne uh, for about a year, I feel like I've been there much longer because it's, <laughs> it's been a long, hard year. And we have dealt with some tough, tough issues. Beach Drive was a tough issue. Connecticut Avenue Concept C 
with DDOT, extremely tough issue, Military Road Lafayette School. We tackle like, you know, as, you know, newly um, minted commissioners, we tackle extremely tough issues. And then you put on top of that the SAP. We've done a lot of work. Uh, I've been all over my SMD. I walk it frequently. I talk to people. I email it. So I think I have a good handle on not only Hawthorne, but also Barnaby Woods. And a lot of the issues that happen, if we want to say within the commercial corridor, absolutely affects Hawthorne. When you, I mean, if you guys don't think that I heard from people on, in Hawthorne when we were talking about VDOT Concept C on Connecticut Avenue, oh my goodness, of course I did. Of course it was a concern to them. So, and just like people that live on the War 3 side of ANC 34G, I pretty much heard from the whole city when we were talking about, you know, the closure of the park. I mean, people didn't say, you know, that's just the ANC 34G or that's the Ward 4 side of ANC 34G. I heard from everyone, definitely everyone, you know, in all of your single member districts and people all across the city. So all of our issues are really interconnected. There's a couple things that I've said um, that really kind of, um, stuck out to me. And I think one of them was the first thing that was stated in terms of the, the, uh, the population. Uh, it might've been Lee who talked about the 5% unless, you know, political natural bound boundaries. So the issues on page five. Um, and then also um, the, and that would kind of address the equal representation, but I would be really remiss if I don't say that the racial equitable um, aspect of this is not a, a really big issue for me as a minority within Chevy Chase and you know the only um, black minority on the council and the impact of taking these districts out of Ward 3 has always struggled with racial diversity. I, we really lost a good sizable population. And, um, you know, I, I just think there's something to be said for that and something to be said for reuniting that. So personally, my position is I think that um, the ANC would be best served as a neighborhood cluster under one ward, and that would be Ward 3. You know, I just feel like that um, a lot of... Uh, the principle, uh, well, the two primary principles, equal representation, racial equity, equitableness in this process are important. And uh, our issues as defined by that neighborhood cluster, Chevy Chase, Barnaby Woods, and Hawthorne, they really are within the Ward 3 area. And I think uh, Robert Gordon kind of hit the nail on the head. I mean, pretty much what we deal with are issues that are impacted in policies that are in Ward 3. So that's the, um, that's the resolution. Um, that's the recommendation that I have. It's that we are served as one, as one ward, one neighborhood. We're one neighborhood cluster. It, do I have a second? Yes, you have a second. Okay. Peter? Yeah. I. Uh, Randy, I think the answer in a nutshell is that uh, this resolution says that ceteris paribus, um, we're, we're better off in one ward and that ward is ward three. We are trying, I think what this, this uh, ceteris paribus, I'm talking to Randy, I mean, he's a lawyer, I figure, you know, it'll work well if I sell him on that notion. It's all other things equal, we're better off in ward three. We understand, I think we have to be realistic and understand that for a variety of reasons, this train has gone way down the track before we got on it. Um, and I think that realistically, we're not gonna have very much influence, but, uh, but it's important to lay down a marker. Um, Carolyn Cook talked about, well, if you can't get the whole uh, area, these, all these neighborhoods back in three, lay down a marker and, um, 
and get a few back. My problem with that approach is that the very reason she wants them back, and many of the people have talked about who are in these neighborhoods want to see them come back to Ward 3, is that now in this, they're, an, they're a political island. The problem is that when you put together the reality of the numbers between these various wards, the only realistic way to propose a map for this makes uh, what is mostly Lisa's district stay in four <laughs> because we can't take all these people back without causing huge Im population imbalances. And then I completely understand Lisa's position, which is if Carolyn finds that argument powerful for all of the, the Ward 4 West communities, it's even more powerful if we reduce it to a third of what, of what it now is. Uh, so um, uh, I, I just don't think that as a way of laying down a marker works. But this says that, this says to people 10 years from now, a group thought about this and for various reasons didn't act quickly enough that we could actually change the facts on the ground, but that here is the argument for why we'd be better off in Ward 3. And so I think it is, it is a, it, it, it basically is just a marker for people years from now when neither you nor I likely will be on the, or, or any of us will be on the ANC. So I, I hope that um, we, um, uh, we consider it um, sort of a message to the future. Um, uh, more than, uh, than, you know, trying to get the subcommittee or the committee of the whole to vote a certain way. I mean, it would be great if they did, but uh, I don't think we would have that influence. Michael? So I'm not as defeatist as um, Peter on this and I'm hopeful um, that it's not too late. Uh, and I think that we should make a very strong push to have us be reunited in Ward 3. It's not a matter of shopping which avenue you, you go to. It's about the dilution of a minority vote. It's about social justice and equity. It's about the bastard way in which um, we were born um, as a 3-4 G. And I don't want to in any way give our imprimatur to to that deal. And I think it's in our overall best interest to do it. And we should say so um, firmly. If the, if the council doesn't want to act on it, you know, that's, that's on them. But on us, I think the obligation is to say, this is, the, this is the right thing. You divided us 20 years ago inappropriately without the interests of our communities being taken into account. And we want it, we want it, we want to be return to where we were, because that's coherent, it's social justice, it's equity, and um, this bifurcated representation is just not um, suited uh, to, um, you know, sort of, it's funny, we, I talked to my wife, she said, well, we don't have a senator to vote for, we don't have a congressman to vote for, and where our representation is split between two council members who have half an interest in uh, in us because of the way the ward is bro broken up and that has to be that has to change so i strongly support the resolution that says um, reunite us um, and we'll see peter if you know you're right that this is just for 10 years out um, but i don't think we should go into it um, with with that notion and i also think we have to keep in our back pocket should we enter into a negotiation, there should be, should we find ourselves in a negotiation to look at Carolyn's representation of, you know, splitting it. I don't, I don't like that idea um, at all. Um, but, but, you know, as a baby step, maybe, maybe there makes sense to it, but I would certainly not start with um, negotiating against our best interests. So that's it. I'm done. I can I can try to lower my hand. There it is. I'm lowered. Ronnie. 
I have two questions. One is, um, does anyone know, I can't remember in our last meeting, uh, the rationale for uh, Council Member Che for um, asking Ward 4. Okay, so John, can you tell me that? And then I have a second question. Well, uh, my, uh, well finish your question because I was interested. Well, my, my question was, um, we found out that Council Member Che had talked to Council Member Lewis George, I suppose, about moving the wards, you know, the three districts back. And I, I didn't get an understanding of her rationale for why. And then my second question is, when I was sitting in on the Ward 3 redistricting hearing, I heard Council Member Che say, I think it was her, Randy, you were there, so you could correct me. Um, I heard her say that it's important to integrate communities. So I forget who spoke earlier. I was trying desperately to find my notes. I think it might have been Nina Dodge who said, you know, she's in a cul-de-sac, that's one little circle of community, and then it's a bigger circle, and then it's a bigger circle, and so forth. I just kind of want to understand that a little bit. You know, I think when Mary Rouse talked about community and others talked about community, I kind of want to understand what that really means to people when they say that. Like, what do we mean by community? Um, and what did um, Mary Che mean about integrating across, that that's another principle that she was considering um, and does anyone know the answer to that? Randy, can you say it? And, and John, can you answer these two questions to help me think through? Well, I'm, I'm aware that the, the two council members discussed this. Um, the context of that is a little bit hazy for me, uh, but I, yeah, I think you have to presume it was fairly substantive. Uh, Just to be clear, I, uh, we don't really know that they discussed it. We know no. that they made a proposal. Um, uh, true. But I, I don't know that they discussed it. It's okay. No, we, well, we knew there was some communication between them. The, the, the question is whether that was uh, a uh, an, an, an irregular ex parte communication, which should should have been public and should have involved public in, uh, public participation or not. So I mean that that issue is out there. I don't know if we can be be conclusive about about that context. So that, that that's that's, a, that's the uh, about what I know know about that issue. I, I do want to get back to Mary Jay's position later on in the discussion uh, when I guess it's when I guess it's my turn. And, and I guess the other my other question really relates to. Um, I kind of want Randy to, to talk about his position again, because Randy, from what I understand, right, you're making the argument that being a part of Ward 4 is good because being a part of um, across the park means that we're more integrated as a sort of as a larger community and that you're a resident of Ward 4 and then you felt that there's, because there's three commissioners on ANC 34G that we're able to kind of leverage that relationship. So, uh, and of course this is complicated by the fact that if uh, Barnaby Woods and Hawthorne and parts of Chevy Chase are the most diverse and now they're now they're Ward 4, we're less diverse, right? But I think there's that larger question of whether or not being part of Ward 4, it's almost like by association in a way, right? Having three commissioners as a part of Ward 4, are we more diverse or not? I'm just trying to understand that that one piece which is confusing. It's that argument is slightly confusing to me. I want to know what Randy thinks about that. Well, first of all, I I think Lisa sort of skipped over the last paragraph of the resolution, which is that we want to keep all of our A and C together, no matter what. I, so that that I think is the most important aspect of this, because uh, I think are the cohesion in ANC 34G with three commissioners in Ward 4 and three commissioners in Ward 3 has been really great. Three, four commissioners in Ward 3, excuse mm -hmm. me. That, that's been very positive, I think, for us. And, uh, and, very, and we, we kept the, the focus in the community on the neighborhoods, uh, which is where it should be. Uh, my experience, you know, I've been now through all of the council members for Ward 4, from Fenty to Bowser to Brandon Todd and now Lewis George. And I 
I have never had a problem with getting their attention on anything. Um, they have been, they've been over backwards to be helpful in our community. Now, some of them are more effective than others. Uh, some, some of the council members were, uh, had good constituent services and some of them didn't. Uh, those who didn't have good constituent services got voted out, uh, not by our ward, our portion of the ward, but by the whole ward. Uh, they chose to have somebody else represent them. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've had a, a lot of, um, we've been able to get accountability from our council member, not only for the things that happen exclusively in Ward 4, but for the things that happen in Ward 3 too. Those council members have supported us on things connected with the, the community center. Both council members have helped us with regard to issues related to Lafayette. Uh, they've both been very helpful on that. Uh, you'll recall that both of them wrote a joint letter on the Military Road School, which I think was very helpful. Um, on issues like things like the Military Road School, we have built, as we say in the resolution, great bridges across the park, which I think have been extraordinarily important, uh, which I don't think would have happened if we weren't a part of Ford 4. Um, I have gone... Council Member Bowser and Council Member Todd both had regular uh, Ward 4 ANC meetings. Um, Council Member Lewis George hasn't done that yet, but, um, and I would go to all of those meetings and meet with other Ward 4 ANC commissioners. And I had a lot in common with them. Their, their concerns were the same concerns that I had. We had a, a lot of things that we worked together on. And Granted, you know, we have a lot of things we work together with Ward 3 on, too. I have a lot of good relationships with uh, ANC commissioners in Ward 3, throughout the Ward 3. Um, but I think it has been very helpful for us to have that connection across the park. And it's a barrier that has been, uh, regrettably, I think, uh, a, a, an impediment to working together in the past. And we've been able to start breaking that down. Uh, to me, the, really our community is the most important part. The ANC is the most important part. Mm -hmm. And we can work effectively, whether we are split between Wars 3 and Ward 4 or not. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make a difference to our effectiveness, I think. In fact, I think our effectiveness, as I've said and I testified, I think it is better. Uh, because of our accountability for two council members. So I am just not persuaded that uh, we should be pushing uh, for, I, I agree with Peter that I think it's, it's probably too late to make any real effective change uh, because it does have ramifications elsewhere. But um, I think it's important to keep our ANC together. And I think we should, um, I, I am not prepared to support a return to Ward 3. I don't think that is in the best interest of our ANC. Michael, you're on mute. I think John was before me. Okay, John, then Michael, then Peter. Okay. Um, we're not here tonight because somebody said, let's talk about redistricting. Um, we're here tonight in, in an ANC context because a government agency has made a proposal, just like DDOT makes a proposal or recreation makes a proposal. And we are reacting to that proposal, which is the Silverman report. The reason given by Mary Che, both uh, in, in person, and the reason given in the Silverman report for the decision that they have made in their proposal is that there was, first of all, the 85,000 figure was appropriate and to move that around would, would cause a domino effect in other wards uh, in terms of the one man, one vote, one person, one vote context. I am a very strong supporter of one person, one vote. And when you and, and Lisa did a fantastic job with a lot of hard work. And 
she mentioned that of the six criteria, the first two are requirements, the others are uh, complementary. So the first, the first one has to do with complying with the federal, national, constitutional, one person, one vote issue. And that, that relates to the census every 10 years and so forth. And as I said, the numbers, to, to, to push those numbers around uh, to the degree that people want to do that would cause a 10,000 swing in, in votes and some domino effects elsewhere. Uh, the second most important element of the six has to do with racial equity. <clears throat> and actually, I had a conversation with Lisa talking about ex parte conversations uh, around 5.30 today or something, something like that, because I wanted her to clarify some of her language and we had, a, we had a good discussion. And I'm very sympathetic with the fact that, you know, maybe keeping, maybe achieving one goal, which is one person, one vote, could have an impact on, uh, on racial equity. And that was raised by our race um, subcommittee or our race committee. Uh, and I'm sympathetic with that slippage that, that she mentions and so forth. I don't know if that's a resolution that we can make as an ANC. So, but I think I do have a honest broker solution to that. So in terms of number one is the, is the one person, one vote. And I think that <clears throat> that makes that's a big impediment to change. And, and also the fact that Mary Che mentioned and also was in the report that there was very little consensus within the community to make a change. I think that has been reinforced tonight. I think we have viewpoints from all, from all over the place. Uh, and so I don't think we can make any conclusion as to, as to any consensus in the community, whether that, that comes from uh, wards three or four. So I, I think in that respect, the Silverman report uh, is, is pretty much on target. And, and I don't think, you know, anything we did tonight would, would change that conclusion by the Silverman uh, report people. Um, regarding, the, regarding the racial issue, I would like to mention that there is, I think, and, and Lisa mentions this about make, making sure that they, they were, the black community would be represented and so forth. There is a requirement in the Silverman report related to the issuance of a racial equity statement that should that must accompany this bill. There is none at this point. Uh, the committee said that they would have one by the time this reaches the council. Um, and I would like, and I, you, you guys know my aversion to, make, to putting ad hoc mo motions up there, but I, I would want to accompany, uh, uh, so I, I'm not in favor of a, re a reunification at this point for the reasons I just stated. And, and I would all, but I would also, and, and to whatever impact this may have on racial equity, I think we should hold the council's feet to the fire on complying with the requirement for, um, for the racial impact statement. Uh, and I would like to just read my motion if I, if I could, which might clarify this and then I'll stop. <clears throat> Resolves that the ANC 34G requests that the DC City Council report the required racial equity impact statement regarding the 2021 redistricting plan to the public at least three days before any City Council action on the plan, and further that the City Council explain how the redistricting plan meets the quote, legal principles that are central to a redistricting, unquote, as noted in section eight of the Council subcommittee report. Those principles include dilution and concentration. So I don't know if we can do much about that, but I think the city council should, should definitely answer that question when it comes to uh, what they're doing in, in all the wars, um, you know, and, and ours included. So that if we keep this, if we perpetuate this situation, which some do not want to do, but if we do wind up perpetuating the current situation, I think the, the council should at least formally address specifically what it means in three and four in terms of racial equity. So that's, that's where I am. My, Michael, would you, would you let me go first just to try to address a couple of uh, John's? Hang on a minute, um, Peter. First of all, we have John offered 
I'm assuming a friendly amendment. I guess right? we we could characterize that. Yeah, it's not it's not a substitute. I guess it would be an addition to it, but um, or well, I, however we we go about this, I think we should require that. I don't have a problem with making that in addition to, but definitely not a substitution for. Oh no, no, no! I'm not okay. talking about a substitution. Okay, I don't this, have this is this is complementary to it. Okay, yeah, it's okay. almost it's almost a standalone recommendation. Yeah, I mean, I, that would be fine if we did it that way. Yeah. Okay. But I did. I wanted to inform you guys of that issue and and, and to let you know that it's there and it's something I think. It, yeah, it's I, I saw that. Yeah. So I don't have a problem with that, Peter. So do, do we? Okay. So I'm not going to address John's um, friendly amendment. I want to address this issue of one person, one vote. Um, John, I, look, uh, I've tried to characterize this uh, this uh, proposed uh, resolution of uh, of uh, um, leases as as a, keeping the book open. Uh, I mean, Michael has a different view of it, and that's fine. You know, I mean, it, it might serve any number of purposes, but I, I want to understand um, if, if it is just the keeping the book open so that people sometime down the way, like 10 years from now, look back and wonder, gee, there are these problems, which is that, uh, you know, all sorts of issues that are important to me occur in a ward I don't live in. <laughs> um, uh, how you square your one person, one vote um, views, uh, what, what you would say to, for example, uh, the parent of a, a student in Wilson who lives in uh, ward four. So you, uh, they cannot vote for the person who they cannot vote for Ruth Wattenberg or whoever is on the State Board of Education. How does, how does that further one person, one vote? There's, there are very few things more essential to a, to a public school student, a parent, a parent of a public school student than having as much influence as they can on the school. So why is it, why is that, um, uh, 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 an argument for that. And I would just while I'm on this subject, let me just uh, addressing Randy. I mean, my concern about what I understand to be your point of view, I, look, as practical politics, I absolutely understand your point, Randy, that we have an in to two council members uh, as an ANC that we might not have. But I'm, I'm concerned that um, we, we sort of, we're gaining what, what the power we gain is taken away from people who find themselves in this, you know, uh, um, whipsaw of of uh, having living a, a life where the major things that happen are over here in Ward Three, but not being able to vote for the Ward Three council member, for example. I mean, is it really defensible to say, you know, well, we do very well by it if these people are put in this really difficult. Um, position in terms of getting their influence, their uh, uh, you know, voting influence felt. Um, anyways, that's a question to you. Um, May I respond? Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. I, I, first of all, I think that there are lots of situations around the district where the uh, parent of a student um, lives in one ward and the, the kids go to the school in another ward. That happens all over the city because the school boundaries and the school feeder patterns are not based on wards. There are a lot of kids who go to Wilson who are from ward two or from ward one. Uh, they'd have the same argument to make. And that, that happens everywhere in the city. Uh, there are now under the proposals that are being made, they're going to have uh, a lot of people who are currently in Ward 6 who are on the west side of the Anacostia who are going to be in Ward 8. Um, that's going to be different for them. Um, but those kinds of things are going to happen when you're trying to get one person, one vote. Um, and you know, it's a very complex task that the 
um, redistricting subcommittee has, I think. <laughs> and our issues are pale by comparison with the ones that they have in wards six, seven, and eight. There, the, the issues are gonna be much more complex. And I would predict that there are gonna be ANCs that are gonna be ward, uh, they're gonna be ANC six, eight, um, or, or ANC six, seven, uh, because they're gonna to try to keep those neighborhoods together. But I, I just think we have to, we, we work within the system that we have. And this system I think is working really pretty well for us right now. Now, I don't think, I, I don't really understand, I don't think, Peter, your argument that this somehow takes away from um, other, um, the, the power of other people uh, who will have less representation because we have more. I don't understand that. Is that uh, the point you're making? No, I, I'm saying that we as an ANC, you as a chair of the ANC uh, in four can talk to both uh, uh, Council Member Che and Council Member Lewis George. That gives you a, a considerable amount of power. If a parent, somebody who's not on the ANC, let's keep Lisa out of this for a moment, okay? But if a parent of a public school teacher, of a, a public school student um, is, wants to have as much influence as they can on you know, the, the educational process in, in what is basically a Ward 3 system, um, certainly after, after uh, elementary school, um, that person's vote is, is diluted because they're in this, in this uh, well, whipsaw. And, I, and we can, and I just, to just to finish, that, that, that other people suffer this problem doesn't justify us not taking a position on what would be a more sensible way of doing it. And to John's point, I mean, yes, the same thing goes to John's point, which is, yes, I understand the numbers today, but what I see this resolution is doing is saying, so we're, we're not, we're not being unrealistic, John. We're, 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 we're being realistic about what the situation is right now. But we're trying to say to people, ceteris paribus, it would be better if we were a, a, a unitary um, uh, political structure. And I just point out, in the course of my conversations with Lisa, one of the things she kept bringing up is a court case back in um, when this change was made. And it's not that, I mean, the court case was against the people who wanted to keep Ward 3 together, but the court case was full of information. This seen by somebody in 2031, after the 2030 census, would provide them with a basis if the, if the, you know, if the population was so then that you know, this could be fixed to say, look, people even 10 years ago were thinking, you know, ceteris paribus, this would be a better situation. So I don't think that we're, I, I think that there's a good one person, one vote um, argument for saying, if we could, this would be the way to do it. Uh, and um, stating that for the future, will have the same influence on the future or might have the same influence on the future that this court case, although, you know, it, uh, this court case had on Lisa, <laughs> uh, you know, which was, was a valuable um, support for her position. So I, 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 I was saying. Let me um, say this. Um, one of the things I was trying to get out a little earlier when the question came up about Mary Che's position, I'm going to read you all the email. This was an email that um, on November 10th, um, and I know Dee's on the line, Dee, if you have any additional information on this, but that um, Abigail McLean sent to uh, a member of the community. And this is what the email says. She says, hi, Janice, I wanted to share the, I wanted to share two possible proposals to amend the Ward 3-4 boundaries in Chevy Chase. I answered both as I'm not altogether sure what the subcommittee may suggest for Ward 4's other boundaries and how that may affect your ward's total population. Both proposals flow from the sentiment, and I want y'all to listen to this, 
from the sentiment that's been expressed to me by many, including going back to the last redistricting in 2010 to reunite Chevy Chase in one war, recognizing that the, the plus minus 5% ward population requirement under the redistricting statute makes moving large numbers of census blocks difficult without substantial cascading changes to a ward's border, I am limiting my proposal to Chevy Chase. Barnaby Woods and Hawthorne would remain in Ward 4. As you know, our redistricting process aims to keep neighborhoods unified. To achieve that goal, my larger proposal would be to shift the border between Ward 3 and Ward 4 from Broad Branch Road to Utah Avenue. This would reunite Chevy, Chevy Chase within Ward 3 while also moving the small bit of Forest Hills between Military Road and Broad Branch back to Ward 3. The concerns of the residents that live in the area that would be redistricted back to Ward 3 more generally align with Ward 3 rather than Ward 4. They feel geographically disconnected from the rest of the ward as they live west of Rock Creek Park and the major commercial areas that frequent and engage with, that they frequent and engage with are along Connecticut Avenue, particularly the Chevy Chase Commercial Corridor. Even now, the Chevy Chase Small Area Plan, which imagines redevelopment of this portion of Connecticut Avenue, including redevelopment of the Chevy Chase Library and Community Center, directly affects them. If, however, the population breakdown between Ward 3 and 4 would not support all of Chevy Chase being reunited in Ward 3, I do have a more modest proposal that would both reunite all of Forest Hill and bring several blocks of Chevy Chase back to Ward 3. In this scenario, the border between 3 and 4 would remain Broad Branch until just south of Lafayette Elementary, where the border would become Northampton, Northampton over Utah. And then she says, maps reflecting each of these scenarios are below. Look forward to hearing from your thoughts. And um, included in that were three maps. So I sent this all to the commission when I was like, when I found this out, that's when I said, we need to have a talk. <laughs> we need to have a discussion about what's really going on and what's really being said. So I think Connie, uh, you may maybe have the question. Mary Che approached Janice because of the concerns that she had been having going back through 2010. So in terms of putting our position, and I agree with you, Peter, my intention, and I wanna read this also, this part of the resolution. The, one, the thing that I say about reuniting, I said, it's the view of the commission, notwithstanding statutory and constitutional limits imposed by the redistricting process, such as ward population requirements, that keeping the Chevy Chase neighborhood cluster unified in one ward is the best interest of the community. I, I'm basically saying in lieu of, what I'm saying is in a perfect world, we, yeah, I kind of agree with Peter. I think it's gonna be hard for us to kind of make a case for this, but I think it is so critical that we represent the view of the community. Uh, and that's kind of why my position changed along with the things that I learned in terms of the, the population reduction of the African-American community. Um, and then, you know, the continued, I mean, we formed the race community for a reason. Um, so, I mean, we know why council member Che approached council member Lewis George. The thing that we don't have going back from 2001 to 2010 and which we'll have tonight is something that documents the greater broader community sentiment. And you could take council member Che's language that expresses what that is. So, you know, I, I obviously we can, we can work around, you know, the issues we have with two council members. Is it best in my opinion to have one unified council member, one unified community one unified neighborhood cluster? I believe so. My other concerns are definitely that black population and, and you know, diluting the diversity of Ward 3, which is abysmal in diversity. We could actually contribute to that. I don't want to discuss anybody's opinion about integrating another Ward neighborhood. We've had conversations with Ward 4 on the military road 
and you guys as commissioners know what they said. I'm not going to repeat that on here, but you know what they said. So we have to be very careful when we, from our viewpoint, sometimes a majority viewpoint, think we're doing the best thing by, you know, these integration concepts. We have not heard anything. I haven't talked to a Ward 4 commissioner. I haven't talked to anybody, you know, across the park about how they really feel about all this. So I'm not going to bring that into this discussion. And I'm not going to act like, you know, that's going to be the best thing for them. We have not had that discussion. Well, we, we sort of did in a way on Military oh, Road. Yeah, we well, that, sort of did in a way on Military Road. We did, but I'm not going to bring that up, Michael, because I, I don't think it's fair. We all know what was said, and we should not forget that sentiment. And they <sighs> were being truthful when, you know, when the commissioner told us that. That should be in the forefront of our thinking from their perspective, how they feel, well, not necessarily that, our perspective. Well, that, but that's, that's, the, that's the point of agreement that you and I, that's one of the points of agreement that you and I have, which is absolutely. I don't want to be part of a process by which we think we're doing for people east of the park that which is in their best interests when I don't think they think it's in their best interests. And we might, we might, you know, want to pat ourselves on the back and say, oh, look how liberal we are. Um, we're, we're walking across the other side of the park and, and, and forming, you know, relationships. We could do that and in a unified Ward 3. I think it's in the best interests of our constituents and we are representatives of our community in my single me member district. I've not heard anyone in my single member district tell me that they wanna stay um, bifurcated between wards three and four. Um, and so I'm informed by what my constituents tell me. And as to the question of, well, if we do this, it's gonna make the city council have to work hard to figure out how to deal with the cascading consequences. Well, too bad. That's 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 their job. They, they can they can deal. That's that's what they that's what they're paid money to do. We're volunteers. They have to do it. We don't. That's right. So when we say to them, our community is best served by representation by one council member in a uniformed district, and if that's going to create additional work for you and your subcommittee and your artificial deadline. You know, too bad, right. too bad. That, so I stand by you, Lisa and Peter, I think, as well, and saying that I support strongly the reunification. And I think it's what our community has, at least my single member district members have told me. Connie, then I'm sorry. I don't know who was first, Randy or Connie. Go ahead, Connie. It was Randy first. Connie hasn't okay. spoken. I was just going to make one sm small point, and that is that I don't know that we can say what the consensus is our uh, ANC because we've had 30, 35 people uh, attend the meeting tonight. Um, now that's a, a tiny little proportion of, of the total, and we haven't done any, any kind of survey. I mean, we should just be careful about saying what the consensus is when a lot of people who support the status quo are just, they're not gonna come out and say it. I mean, they're, they're, they don't think they have to, so. Quite a few people support the status quo. The whole first panel, or first couple of panels. Right? Yeah, well, and I think there are a lot more out there that, that would have if, you know, somebody had come and asked them, but. And, but they, that goes with, I think, Randy, pretty much every um, issue that we have. I mean, we had the well, same concern with military. We had that same concern with Beach Drive. I mean, I think we have done a really good job in the past of taking that into consideration. And even if people are not here before us, for example, my husband's downstairs. If I brought him up here and sat him in front of the camera, he would say, reunited under Ward 3, one unification. That's what he's gonna say. So we kind of know that there's gonna be people for, and we know that there's going to be people against. We know that it's with every issue we have 
And it's not a matter of how many people are before us. It could have been two people before us tonight. Right. And we would still have I, the same responsibility of weighing those issues. Have I agree respect. with that. We just shouldn't assume that, that means, you know, that there's a 75% uh, of the people out there in, in, in all of our SMDs support one position or the other. That We can't say that. So we, we could take out the word consensus. So we can say that in our representational role, we have reached this conclusion. And if we've reached the wrong conclusion, then next November, we can be voted out for not representing the interests of our, our community. But if the word consensus is a sticking point, Randy, because we don't know exactly what the consensus is, then we take out that word. But I don't think that word is in there. Where's no. I don't no, think it's, no, that's what I'm saying. It's not in there. But but if there's a if there's a if there's a a sense that we're somehow saying our community is con is uh, has consensus around this, consent around this, we can just make it clear that we are acting as representatives of our community, and this is this is our this is how we vote. It's like every representative, whether it's a senator or a congressman or whomever they vote on, and they're on their using their best judgment. And if we word, use bad judgment, we get voted out. Well, the word consensus appears in the Silverman report. That's that's the one that's before us. That's the one we have to react to. But John, and, it her report it says to, there was no consensus. And it, and, it, and I don't know how they possibly reached the conclusion that there was no consensus, oh, given what God. given what who who they heard from and what they did. Exactly. Okay, but that's that's before us. If we want to challenge that, we can. But that's that's where the consensus notion came from in the in their proposal. Well, yeah, but in the foot, I, and I, don't, I, and I don't think we I don't think we changed. I don't think we re, I don't think our meeting tonight revealed any consensus either. Yeah, I, I put a footnote in Lisa's draft, which said that the process that the Silverman committee engaged in was not fulsome. And that to, to reach a conclusion that there was no consensus, which is the basis for their decision, is just absolutely um, wrong and inappropriate. Right. Connie has wanted to talk for a long time. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> just thinking. I <laughs> well, I want to say that um, that it hurt everyone, and I think the strongest argument for me was two things. One is that how this even began 20 years ago, you know, when you strike a deal like that, it's not something that I, that's logical or something that was really thought out. It was seemed to be a backroom deal. Um, the deal was struck and there's some pros in that deal, meaning I think that's what Randy was saying. You know, there, it seems like we can approach two council members. We've heard some people say that they could, others who said no one's ever really addressed any of the problems that they have, you know, so I don't know which is true. It's not like we're surveying everyone. Um, but I think nonetheless, you know, the origin story is not great. I don't really like that. Number two is, I think, what um, Bill Hoffman said um, when he says, you know, he could walk to Connecticut, but he can't walk to 16th Street. And I think someone else said that too. You know, that was the that was the point for me on the military road school for pre-K. You know, people move here to walk their kids to school, you know? And what is your neighborhood? Your neighborhood is the neighborhood you walk to. Like that, that's, you know, like I live on Nevada. So for me, Connecticut Avenue is where I go to walk to. I have a car, I drive, I go everywhere in the city to go shopping, you know, everywhere. Okay, not just the city, but Montgomery County as well. But those two points uh, I resonated with. I think that they're strong points. And I think that's the point we made with military road school, which is like, you move our pre-K all the way out across the park. What, what, what does that mean? That doesn't make much sense to me. Um, you should open it to those who are willing to go and drive across the park and go, but you can't just move the entire pre-K class there. That doesn't make sense. So, um, you know, I think, but here's my third point. If we're going to vote on this resolution, and let's say the majority of us votes for what Lisa put forward, I don't really buy this argument that we wait 10 years, it's a marker. I know Peter said that, and I know Randy said, oh, you know, we don't have, th that doesn't make sense to me. Like, if we're gonna fight for this, we fight for it now. It's, today is December 1st, right? The vote is the 7th. It feels like six days is not enough. 
but why even do it then? Why put a resolution out? Like it's, to me, it's like wishy-washy. You know, if we really believe strongly that what we've heard tonight and we can't hear from everyone. I mean, this has been the problem with some of the commission meetings. Sometimes we hear from a lot of people and sometimes we don't hear from everyone and you never know, okay? And so it's the strength of people's arguments. So what I heard today was, I kind of like being in Ward 4. It's been nice, it's my, you know, it's my house, it's my neighborhood, but I didn't really hear more about like, well, Ward 4, I'm, I'm a part of all their issues and I feel like I'm really a part of Ward 4. I didn't really hear that so much. I hear I heard more of like Ward 3, you know, Chevy Chase Small Area Plan was a huge thing. You know, we don't feel like we can, even though there is room for everyone's voices to be heard, that vote seems to really matter. And that, 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 that I think we should take into heavy consideration. So what do we do from now if we put this resolution together and we vote on it, Lisa, I don't want it to be a watered down thing because what's the point of that? No, no, no. And I, I well, think- How do we, what should we do more to that? Like we, we, we put it forward, let's say it votes and it goes ahead. Well, first we send, we send a good when, cover letter. We testify, we send it to our ward council members. We try to get them in the meeting. And I agree with you, we 100% advocate for it because I mean, it's, we have to put our voice on the record. And I think somebody said, and it might've been Callie, we do it strongly. We take it on a hundred percent. And, um, you know, in doing so, we are going to make an impression upon the council. I also think that it's not maybe a done deal. There are people all across the district that are putting their voice up saying, you know, right. either that they like the redistricting map or they don't. I don't know if you guys saw Council Member Gray's comment, but he is up in arms about it. Right. So uh, the re subcommittee, the redistricting subcommittee's map and recommendation is just that. That's what it's going to the Committee of the Whole as a recommendation. And the Committee of the Whole is going to have to decide whether or not they like it. And we already know that there's some consternation over it. So um, are we out? I don't know. I mean, we have to do the best we can, but we do exactly what we do on the other issues. Look at everything we did with Military Road. We had a meeting with the mayor and we told them how strongly we felt about this. So, and I think the other point that you make, I mean, I think that is the strong point is if Hawthorne, Barnaby Woods and parts of Chevy Chase are the most diverse, they, they should be a part of work three. So, I mean, that's hard to deny that part of it, I think. Um, they are. Yeah. And, and I, you know, from my perspective, I haven't said this before, I want somebody to fight to get us back. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's great to say we want to integrate, you know, something else. But I mean, my God, you have such a rich, diverse community here. And why wouldn't you want that to be part of War 3 when you don't have that? I mean, why would I would fight hard to get this community back if it was me, because I would want a diverse community. Yeah, and that's where and a lot of diversity lies on this end. That's well, the, the, the other thing I do want to say, though, I mean, my, I guess my fourth point is that um, let's say we're reunited. I don't think it precludes us still from reaching out as commissioners to Ward 4 commissioners, on, on, right? I mean, I think we have to do a better job and the council members themselves, of course, they have to work together on the council. But if we care about that, just as a point of like, we're all of DC and then certain that, or maybe they don't affect us, but oftentimes it actually does. I mean, crime and so forth. We're really, affect, we're very, I think you made that point, Lisa, we're integrated, we are as a city, that we have to do a better job of it. I mean, and how do we do that is that we have to reach out and do more and to talk to, to others and see. So I don't wanna lose that pro. And this is why I asked Randy, because I think he's been on here longer. He's seen, you know, it's not just that he's chair. I, I don't buy that agreement. I, I don't think it's just because he's chair, he's getting his voice heard. We heard from other residents who feel like, you know, certainly council member Lewis George, George has listened to them. But I think that this, we got to do better at, at, at bringing the two together because we're just across the park. You know, we are just across the park, you know, so I just want to make that point. All right. I'll call the vote. Let me just on one comment on, well, you called the vote. Okay. 
I, I think we've, we've discussed this a lot and I, I, I think we should take a vote. All right. Well, can I just uh, point of order or whatever it is that the, 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 the language, no, no, but the language of the resolution is set out in the alternative. So, no, no Lisa has Lisa said what the, the language is. The motion is one ward. So, where? Yeah. No, Randy but, asked her to say that at the beginning, Michael. So, no, I understand that, but in the, in the written draft that I have, the last one that I have, it says, Unified in one ward, and then paren alternatively right. two so, wards. Is that out? Yes, okay. that's out. That's out. It, okay. Right. Ended it to one ward. Right from the okay. beginning, Randy asked Lisa to be clear, and that's and so Lisa has said one ward. Yeah. Right, but then then though it should say unified in ward three. Yeah, that's please make that word change. Yeah. Okay. think so. Okay, Randy, um, call for the vote. All those in favor? Wait, may I ask one more thing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the phrase that says, <clears throat> notwithstanding constrictions imposed by the redistricting process like ward population requirements, is, is that the sort of default position related to the one person, one vote? I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not sure how that, how to interpret uh, Would it make you feel better if it said something like this, John? Um, the commission recognizes the these various uh, constrictions or whatever the word is we use. Notwithstanding those, we feel da da da. I mean, we, we I mean, d d d we, we do recognize. What are constrictions, Peter? It, I, I didn't understand. It's not that. like you can ignore those. Those are constitutional requirements. You can't right. ignore them. Yeah. I mean, I guess what we're saying is we're going to, if we vote for this, we'd like for the reunification to occur. And it's up to the council to figure out how to make it happen. The end. I mean, it's not our job. I mean, I, who, I mean, Fox Hall to Ward 2. I mean, we, that's not our job, right? I mean, right. that's bigger than the ANC, right. I think. Right. So what I think that our biggest principle is we want our ANC, we want us to remain together. Right. We want to remain together. We didn't want the idea of like separate Barnaby Woods here and Hearth on there and so forth. We want to be together. We we said in this resolution, we want all the single member districts seven to remain together. OK. And we now if we're going to put this out, what I'm asking for is that we have to push for it. I mean, it can't just be we have the resolution out there. But it I is up to them. And if they the say they can't make it happen, they can't make it happen. You know, that, that's, that's. We need to take a vote. Yeah. We've, debate, we've debated this long enough. Yeah. All those in favor, raise your hand. Okay, okay, wait, Michael, Michael, I can't hear you. So, again, to the language of this thing. Um, do we need this, the phrase that John is, is pointing to, do we need, notwithstanding statutory and constitutional limitations imposed by the restrict, redistricting such as population, why can't we just say it is the view of the commission that keeping the Chevy Chase neighborhood cluster unified in one, in Ward 3, facility, blah, blah, blah. Why do we need that phrase? We can, we can delete, and you know what, we can pass the motion and work on that language, but we can cut that and basically say, it's the view of the commission. Um, that, it that goes there, that keeping. The Chevy Chase neighborhood cluster in Ward 3, unified in Ward 3 is the best interest of the community. Right, and okay. that's a stronger, that's stronger language in it. And I think it addresses the the confusion that that notwithstanding, um, phrase creates okay. and it and it says that we're doing this because this is what we believe is in the best interest of the community we're not we're not we don't take on the constitutional issues exactly that's their that's their job that's their job <laughs> so please yes all those in favor raise your hand for all those opposed one Abstentions, one. Okay, it passes. Okay, I will 
<laughs> do this language and get it to you guys to review and make sure that last paragraph is correct. Clocking in at 329.30. Okay. <laughs> okay, are we done? Well, <laughs> what, what, once I, I wanted, I don't understand Carolyn, uh, her question. If we lose this, will you host a meeting about moving the ANC what? across the parks or really word for, I don't know what that means, but anyway. Yeah, I know. I think I what she is talking about. Well, moving the ANC. I'm not know. in favor for moving the A. I'm not in favor for moving no. the A. My district. Yeah, oh my God. A. No, no. Absolutely no. not. I mean, we, we're, you're keeping that paragraph in, aren't you? About mm -hmm. keeping yes. the ANC together? Okay. Yeah, yes, you have to keep that. I, I don't yeah. think that's the most important part. And we, the question about neighborhood cl clusters, cluster, that's just an OP term. Like okay. that you're using, right? So yeah, but I, I don't think we need that word either. I think we could say keep the Chevy Chase neighborhood unified. Okay. I think that word cluster doesn't add anything. Okay, okay. we we can work all of this out. Okay. Wow. Thank I never you. thought a special meeting would take three and a half hours <laughs> after I drove five hours to get back here for this meeting. I <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel bleary eyed, but I, you know, it's, it's important. So thank you. Was it Did snowing in New Haven today? What? Was it snowing in New Haven yet? No, it yep. wasn't snowing, but you know, I drove seven uh -huh. hours up on Sunday and five hours. Down. Anyway. Hang up, Randy. Randy. Okay, wait, hang up. Let, let me I see the chat. Connie, chat. Connie. Chat. yes. Did you copy the Q and A? Yes, that's why I want to, don't. Don't go away, Randy. Uh, <laughs> Stay on for another half an hour. <laughs> well, you stop, then I can't. Okay, I'm saving it now. Christina's the last word. Okay, Christina's that last word. All right, everyone. Okay. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night.